Hello, everybody, and welcome to another day of the SCC. Um, so my name is Nemo Joe. As you guys know, I'm a woman grandmaster, and I'm here today to cast this amazing tournament. So let's first explain the format for everybody, what's going on. Um, as you guys know, it's also known as Title Tuesday. It happens every Tuesday at 10 a.m. PDT. The time control is three plus one. And we've got a 10 round Swiss tournament where the top eight players advance to the post tournament bracket. So we got some big names in here today, guys. Um, lots of really, really strong players. And this all leads up to getting a seat in the main SCC tournament, which by the way, has an hundred thousand dollars in prices in prices. That's a lot of money, guys. That's a lot of money. There's a few ways you can qualify for the main speed chess championship tournament. We do have today one of those events, but we also have the bullet chess championship, the SCC invitational, the junior speed chess tournament, uh, as well as a speed chess super Swiss coming up really soon. So today is another day of the speed chess grand prix. All right. Well, um, here's where we, here's our current prize pool for, for today. The season total is $50,000. That's also a lot. Uh, today's first place very specifically gets 1,000. Second place, 500. Semi-finalists, 200. Um, and quarterfinalists, you know, 100. Top women, 100. And top streamer, also 100. So we do have quite a lot of prizes being handed out today. And... Finally, we'll talk a bit about how we do, how the Grand Prix points actually work and how they add up to getting um, a player a slot in the main SCC event. So we do have the weekly base points for the Swiss score. The first place gets a KO bonus of 12 points. Uh, second place gets eight, semifinalists gets four and quarterfinalists gets two. So at the end of the season, which I believe is in two weeks, we count up the eight best weekly Swiss scores, plus all bonus points. So a lot of things are going on here, guys. A lot of things. And we're, we're starting to wrap up the Speed Chess Championship Grand Prix, uh, after which we'll be going, of course, into the main Speed Chess Championship event. But there is quite a lot at stake here in the upcoming today, first of all, and also next week. So guys, Stay excited. It's going to be really interesting. And games are actually underway as well. Uh, we already do see Hikaru kicking it off. Let's just watch this from Hikaru's point of view. Um, as you guys all know, very, very strong. Grandmaster has won multiple, multiple speech chess championships. Okay. Well, this position is looking quite good for him. I'm not sure how White's Rook actually... Ended up on B5. I did, of course, we missed a bit of the um, the first part of the game, but let's just take a quick run through and see actually how did how did that rook end up on B5? I'm I'm really curious uh, to see that. All right, so we're we're going into the some form of the ready. All right, I, I'm just like keeping an eye out on that rook. How does how does that rook get there? Oh, I see. Okay. So we swapped off the Knights and White thought it was a good place to put his Rook on B5. To be fair, it's quite active here. However, I think in the long scheme of things, the Rook might be a little bit misplaced on B5. It is doing a little bit of, you know, attacking, but at the end of the day, it's still getting kicked around. And we can see that the evaluation bar here really does not like white's position and i have to admit i do not, i'm not a fan of this rook on b5 it looks cool he gets style points for it but unfortunately it's not doing a whole lot there okay hikaru went for something quite safe he's just you know swapping off the queens um he knows that he's better in this end game white still is yet to develop his rook and his knight guys don't forget to actually develop your pieces like as as far as i'm concerned this rook is doing great but if you if you don't if you have like two pieces undeveloped on move 20 against a super grandmaster you're probably not doing amazing that's just my personal opinion though i mean i don't know why i think he has a great position here um but we can definitely do a very quick 
look at Hikaru. He's he's drawing a lot of arrows right now on his board. You know the typical typical Hikaru things, um, and he he's going at it. He's he's really going at it. Okay, so we see that he has like these great ideas of pushing up the e pawn. That looks absolutely killing. The rook on b five is still very very misplaced. Um, well, his knight is currently under attack, so okay, he exchanges it off, but he has quite nice pawns on d4 and e4 and yeah those arrows man those arrows he he knows what he wants he has that very oh look at that honestly this is the pawn structure i live for what is this pawn structure chat like look at it look at it it's literally all the pawns on the light squares if he only had another c pawn that could go to c2 my life would be made um but that's a that's quite a beautiful pawn structure i have to admit and of course this position is just completely winning um when your pawn, pawn structure looks that good there's no way your game is not winning i the pawns are just gonna roll down the board um we will see i do believe hikaru has to bring out his light squared bishop at some point um, just to be able to help push his pawns up. But he knows that he's going to lose the B7 pawn and the arrows are coming down once again. I'm not exactly sure what he's saying, but oh, he wants to defend the B pawn before he brings his bishop out. Honestly, he's in no hurry at all. There is, oh, he just smacked his head. Oh, wait. Whenever he car smacks his head, it's not like when I smack my head. Like when I smack my head, I know I blundered a queen, but when he car smacked his head, he probably just, you know, gets checkmating five instead of checkmating four he's he's still completely winning here i'm not sure what the head smack was for but this is this is totally fine for him he's he's completely still rolling white okay to be fair if white plays f takes e4 and f takes e4 happens he will not have that amazing pawn structure anymore but hey when your position is this winning when white has absolutely no moves to make um there is not much you can actually do here so this is going to be a great position. White is also very long time. As you guys know, this is a three minute plus one second uh, kind of game, right? So the one second does definitely help you not flag, but one second increment is still pretty close to three plus oh. So both, both sides are playing like really, really fast now. Um, I do want to see the end of this game because, wow, this pawn is rolling down. What is White going to do? I mean, he has realistically one move. Oh, okay, well. Resignation is also one way to end the game, um, but that was a very, very nicely played game from Hikaru. Um, and yeah, you know, we do have a lot of really, really strong players playing here, but let's take a look at another streamer, um, Anna Kremling. She is a woman fide master, I believe. And currently, wait, is your game already in? Her game might have, ended already because I don't see the clocks but um I mean that that is a position that I would probably prefer playing why that looks like some kind of Sveshnikov um gone not too amazing but you know shout out to Anna Kremling as well really talented streamer from Sweden slash Spain all right let's take a look at who else is still currently playing uh okay so one second here guys I know how this works, I promise. Not scuffed at all. Uh, okay, we'll just drop in on some Grandmasters. Well, so usually in the first round, what you usually see is, okay guys, not scuffed at all. <laughs> okay, so the Grandmaster is, this is actually a draw, unless I'm very mistaken. No, this is, this is actually a draw. So in the first round, we see a lot of really strong Grandmasters paired up against, um, I, King E2 was not the right call there, but hey, look, Black didn't capitalize on it, so it worked. I do believe after King E2, there was King D4, but it's it's fine. It's it's totally fine. Oh my god, no, that is that is not how you want to play this position. King D4 here is actually winning. Wait, wait, are you telling me that this international master actually messed up? Oh no. Oh no. I was calling this out to be a draw. And so, so this is why, obviously, you know, Black is a 3,000 rated Grandmaster and White is only a 2,400 rated International Master. It's because of things like this, right? When you play against somebody higher rated, you kind of have to like make really precise moves all the way down to the end. Uh, White had a pretty good game, but unfortunately for him, 
he put his K on the wrong square is a pretty, you know, sufficient way of putting it. If you if you place king e2 here actually, and black goes back to e5, you have this thing, this term called the opposition, where your opponent's king is actually not able to come through and help this pawn advance, right? So for white not playing, playing king e3 actually was the big mistake. I think he might have been scared of king g4, but you can always play king e3. And then once you take out g3, there's king takes e4. And after king takes h4, you once again can play either king f3 or king f4. And this h pawn, pawns on the side of the board, as we know, cannot promote if your opponent's able to get a king right in front of the promotion square. So that was white misplayed that endgame slightly of course since this is a speed chess tournament there are not a lot of you know there's not a lot of time for you to think about all this stuff but but it was a very unfortunate misplay from white's point of view all right so let's take a look the second round has already started let's just drop in on see how nepo is currently doing la chess is q he's what is this opening i'm sorry wait 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 what okay b3 e5 bishop b2 knight c6 knight f3 queen e7 c4 all right i'm being told that this is a nimzovich larson attack but it's also not a very typical opening you would expect to see from top level chess players but then again i remind myself that this is nepo we can see everything from nepo i still remember the one time that nepo played like 10 pawn moves in a row i believe against anish giri this was like a few tournaments back so you know He's currently letting his opponent use all of his time. His opponent must be as confused as I am because he spent almost one whole minute on the first four moves. And, and that's honestly, that's honestly, you know, not, not great time management. It's not great time management. I'm sorry. But Nepo is also thinking a little bit on his move as well. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't refresh. Here we go. Okay. Two, two minute, we're on move six. I think this is one of the slower games I've seen, but with the nature of the position, uh, honestly, what is going on? Okay, so white's knight is currently under attack. Okay, knight, knight, knight goes to the rim. Usually I would say knights on the rim are dim, but black also has a queen on d6, so I'm not entirely sure if you know that's applicable in this, these kind of positions anymore. Um, development is about even i don't know if you would count this queen as you know a developed piece i'm not entirely sure what is going on but i do think white is very slightly better just because hear me out here guys oh that is not the move i wanted to see i wanted to see g3 and then bring the bishop out and maybe attack f5 but he decides to go about it in a different way well he of course didn't want to lose his d5 pawn but i do think that just having your opponent you know take Taking on d5 was not the end of the world here, um, especially because you get a lot of compensation, I think, for it. But hey, Nepo is a very strong grandmaster. And he's familiar with playing these kind of complicated positions, so I totally trust his judgment. Um, but he doesn't want to lose that pawn. I respect that. He's just going to develop now. This might actually start looking a bit more like a normal position uh, where he just brings out his bishop. Castle's short. Uh, maybe probably pushes out the d-pawn at some point. d3 is a really good move here too. Yeah, I was just about to say, maybe you want to castle before playing d3, but he's capitalized, capitalizing on this immediately uh, just because it's the right tempo. He's attacking e4, obviously, if black plays this, right? You got queen takes d3, and you can see the eval bar go up. Okay, why is the eval bar going up? I'm not actually entirely sure, but... It's looking like white Black's king is going to have a hard time uh, castling or getting to safety in the center, especially because the bishop on c8 can move away uh, since it's defending the b7 pawn. And getting this bishop out of f8 is going to take a few moves. So I do think that that is the reason um, why the engine really prefers white position, white's position in this at this point. So we do have 50 seconds for Black. This is This is like... One of those games where your opening just didn't go right. Like, you know, when you play a game and you're like, my opponent kind of trolled the opening, but then you mess up that opening and then you'll feel bad about it because you're like, but I should have been better out of that opening, right? Well, this is exactly one of those kind of games. I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but I've experienced this a lot of times. I'm really wary of like openings that are not E4 or D4 at this point because I'm like, I know I'll mess that up. 
Okay, F4 is a very good attempt by Black. Um, if obviously you can't play G takes F4 because then you lose your knight, but White can simply castle and Black is still stuck with his king, the center of the board. So I don't think this is going to be looking very, very good for Black, especially with 20 seconds to 1 minute 40. Oof. Oof. One of the players here is playing speed chess. The other is, I'm not quite sure doing what, but he's, he's trying his best and we have to give him props for that. He is, after all, playing one of the strongest chess players out there. I believe Nepo is still rank four in the world. Um, so yeah, he's, he's definitely trying. He's definitely trying. Okay, this king is absolutely like just gone. This king is gone. Oh my God, okay. All right, we're gonna see queen d5. Uh, we're going to see bishop e6, and then we're going to see knight takes d6, and we're going to take the queen on g5, and the resign comes in from black. All right. It was a good effort. It was a good effort, but that was a fairly one-sided game. Okay, let's drop back in and see how Hikaru is currently doing. Um, okay, well, he's, he's, he's definitely better. I do think he is actually going to be crushing black just based on the fact that he has a better position i mean honestly there's nothing like there's no like pawns or anything up but it's a good position um okay so this will be an end game win for sure uh from from hikaru and we can just take a quick look and see how jobava is currently doing i believe his chess.com username is exotic princess i've been saying this for a really really long time that exotic princess is my favorite username on chess.com so huge shout out to jobava i don't think he knows i exist but i have actually been following a lot of his games because every single time when i lose my game early on my stream i'm just like hey let's let's see what exotic princess is going up to because it's just one of those usernames that really sticks in your mind, right? Um, so this is like pretty much one of those one of those usernames that I really, really like. All right. Uh, he is currently, I think, winning quite so confidently as well. His opponent only has eight seconds and he's got a whole minute like these time differences are pretty big when you consider that everyone here is like quite a strong player right we're all they're all title players they're all very very strong but then you see like some of the world's best best um versus some of the world's best which they're still really good players but then you just kind of see like a really big gap in in time and everything so um that was a really really nice game played by jovava really clean his opponent did flag at the end and we also see hikaru here just clinching the win he is up to queen so his opponent has resigned um let's also take a look at how oh big fish is currently still playing um once again really strong grandmaster from russia <clears throat> and this is this is just completely Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Big Fish is black. He's losing. What did I miss? Oh my god. Oh! Did he did his opponent mean to give up that rook? Okay, well, his opponent didn't need to. Okay, I just like dropped into the game. I was like, what's going on? But it actually looks like Big Fish is losing. Okay, that's the that's a 3,000 rated player playing black there. 3,100 actually. But Hey, look, anything can happen in these kind of speed chess tournaments because of the time. Like, blunders totally happen. Super Grandmasters are not, you know, entirely engines. So really, really got to give props to, to White for winning that game. Wow. And look at that rating, too. Plus 15 for White over here. All right. That was a very unfortunate game um for big fish but hopefully he'll be able to make a comeback and i know that he will be able to make a comeback because you know a big part of playing chess is is learning to uh, come back okay and we see alexi so so okay sorry i can't pronounce his name but he is a very strong grandmaster very strong youth i believe from russia um he has the two rooks versus a queen, and he's got the pass pawn. So this was a very nice win from him as well. All right, who else is still playing? Okay, so round two is starting to slow down a little bit. Um, let's just drop in. Okay, well, that game is done as well. Okay, there's not many games left. Let's just click on a random one. All right, let's see how these two people are doing. All right. I don't want to say caster's jinx, but this should be a draw. This should most definitely be a draw. There's no way anybody loses this. 
Alexei Serrano. Okay, I almost got it correct. All right, and they do have a Alexei Serrano. All right, thanks, chat. Appreciate it. Uh, Swiss Gambit for Fedo. Maybe, maybe, maybe he was just like, yeah, let me just drop this loss right now so I get easier pairings and I come back at the end. I mean, I would not be completely surprised about that because he maybe he probably didn't mean to do a Swiss Gambit, but a Swiss Gambit is actually like a valid thing. This is a total draw, by the way, chat. Um, Rook versus Bishop endgames are drawn. And it's, okay, maybe it's not a draw if you play that move. Oh my God. Okay, rook c3, bishop here. And this bishop has to go somewhere where he doesn't want to go because otherwise you get checkmated. Oh no. Did I jinx that? I feel like I might have jinxed that. It was supposed to be a draw, I swear. Rook versus bishop in games are supposed to be a draw. <laughs> Just not with the way how I played it. Okay, to be fair, when you're so low on time, it gets a little bit difficult, but it was most definitely supposed to be a draw. Um, it's all right. Look, like I said, grandmasters are not superhumans. Everything happens. Everything, everything, you know, things happen. It's fine. It's okay. Um, but yeah, if you guys want wanted a quick refresher, Bishop Rook endgames are drawn as long as you don't, you know, get yourself almost checkmated. Okay, well, here we just have Hikaru blitzing out the first few moves. We'll watch this from Hikaru's point of view. Um, I guess his opponent is an IM 2700. That's pretty solid. I do think White's position is like actually significantly better here. Um, we don't, we haven't actually seen Hikaru like, you know, be down on anything, but hey, look, there's always a first. There's always a first. His position is slightly worse uh, just because, you know, <clears throat> not castled yet. The pawn structure is a little bit little bit worse than white's but nothing nothing of very significant uh, notice i mean white has good chances to in this game but hikaru being hikaru you know anything could happen um let's do a quick listen in on another one of chess.com's top streamers um peter svitler he's over here he's playing one of my favorite openings the nydorf as the white side this is like, okay, he didn't go for F4, which is what I usually would have done, but he, he's looking like he's having a good time. He's playing confidently. His opponent is also a very strong player as well, so this is going to be quite the fight. All right. Once again, I have no idea what he's saying, but but with the speed at which he's making his moves, I have to think that this is a pretty good position for White. I play this personally myself, so I definitely know I like this from White's point of view, but Hey, look, I'm not exactly a Nidorf expert, but yeah, this is this is looking good. He's got he's got a lot of options here. He can play bishop takes a6. That's actually not a pawn you very frequently want to take, but in this case, it works totally fine because black actually does not have like moves like rook a8 and queen a5 since the knight is protecting the king side really, really well on b3. Um all right, for everybody asking, what did I do to Danny? Danny is not casting today. I am casting today. As you guys can tell, I'm, I'm the discount Danny with worse jokes. <clears throat> it's fine. Um, okay, well, Hikaru has definitely tried to do something, uh, namely attacking the center of the board with his rook going on g4. Remember when his opponent's rook was on b5 in the first game? This is like the exact opposite of that. I, I kind of like this as well. Uh, but this is still a very, very solid position. Um, not much is going... Okay, well, I said not much is going on, but then White just started pushing all of his pawns up. I don't know if I like this. Like, if your king is sitting on B1 and you've got, like, two, like, basically open diagonals aimed against your king, that just makes me feel really uncomfortable. Whether or not we're almost in an game, that just makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm not really sure if I liked um, White's expansionary pawn push very much. Uh, and let's let's take a listen in on well look in technically on Hikaru just see what kind of arrows he's drawing because we all know that that's the best content out there. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, we got. I I am actually not a hundred percent sure what the arrows mean. I'm I'm just here to you know to analyze Hikaru's arrows. I think he really wants that e5 pawn push. I agree with him. That e5 pawn push would be great. He really wants knight c5. I'm not actually sure how he's going to get knight c5 in, 
Um, but that's an arrow that, that has been drawn. He does have to get rid of the D4 pawn before that happens. So I do predict an E5 move at some point. How... Ever, I don't know if you want to do that because your rook is still chilling on g4. That rook is literally that rook that was on b5 in the first game. Do you guys remember the first game? Because I remember the first game. His opponent's rook was not having fun on b5. I don't know if this rook is having fun on g4 either. Um, like, I mean, why can always like play something like knight, knight to h2 or something like that, but there is always rookie four, so it's not like the rook's strictly getting trapped. Whenever that knight moves, okay, well, we do see knight h2. From white, that's what I said. You have to play rookie four just to save that knight. Um, but this position is looking very, very equal once the rook comes off. Like, I don't actually see a way for black to break through. Of course, anything can happen. I, I've i seen two two positions already where it was supposed to be completely drawn in. You know, somebody threw a little bit. So, uh, once again, I, I would not put it past white to potentially throw this position. Why, actually... I have to admit that Black does have a slight upper hand here. I think this is an end game that Hikaru can definitely convert. Um, F5 coming in. I was ex actually expecting F6 maybe first, but F5 is totally fine as well. And now we might actually see C5. We might see C5 or E5. Which one is he going to pick? Which one do you guys think is better? Okay, he chose, he chose to play E5. Like I said, this is a slightly better position now for, um, for, for for Hikaru just because he's able to get his pieces out faster. White's Knight is on the bottom file, literally on the bottom file. Hikaru is actually up a whole minute in like 15 seconds or some, something. I haven't even looked at the clock, but yeah, this time difference and the fact that this end game is just better for Black, this is going to be Hikaru's win for sure. Forget what I was saying about this position being a draw. It's going to be Hikaru's win easily. Um, there's really not much that, you know, could go wrong here like you can just slowly all right he, did, he wants to say this knight. Well, to be fair this knight is better okay he's messed up white's pawn structure a little bit even more and these pawns are going to cost white his game because whoa how do you even defend that you don't that's 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 yeah there's just no defending those pawns uh, hikaru's not even like in a hurry to take that pawn because he knows it's going to be gone so he pushes one move c5 first probably can just take b4 here i think that's just a free pawn i mean you could go extra and play b6, but yeah, that's just a free pawn. Um, and one of these pawn, one of these are gonna drop, and black will be snapping up all of the pawns. Okay, taking h4 is probably more accurate, just defending e4 as well. But this will not be a very difficult end game for Hikaru to convert. So that was some very, very nice, actually, some very nice technique from Hikaru's end. Because I was calling out how it's supposed to be a draw and everything, but then his opponent made like one slight mistake with knight h2. Let that rook actually get, you know, swap off, swap off white's better rook, because the rook wasn't doing much on g4. And we see what happens. So that's just how strong, you know, super grandmasters are. Because if you make a single mistake, not even a mistake necessarily, if you like give them one tempo to do something they want to do, your game is going downhill. And that's just like a lot of respect I have for their gameplay. Uh, let's take another listen in. I mean, sorry, another look in on um, how how these players are doing. I I, I don't remember. Sorry, they're, they're real names, but... Um, this is looking like a win for black, I want to say. It's not gonna be like a super easy end game to convert, but I think I think black's got this. We're gonna see a 3,000 rated player go down to someone 2700, which is actually, you know, there's no, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I'm just saying people aren't invincible. People aren't invis invincible at all. <clears throat> um um yeah letting that pawn come all the way down is not 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 the strat here but it's fine there's not much white could do well we do see a, quite a few upsets already so this speed chess championship this titled tuesday is going to be really intense it's going to be intense chat um you know we we usually expect the higher rated player to consistently perform but we have seen a lot a lot and an emphasis on a lot of different you know, just like inaccuracies and just misplays and all that stuff. This is supposed to be a win for White. Let's see if um, Timo Feyev is able to convert this. Uh, like I said, guys, Super Grandmasters, 3,000 rated players are not invincible. There's always a chance. Just believe you can win and then go go get that win, guys. Go get that win. <clears throat> all right. Well, 
White has made zero progress in the last five moves. So this is looking good for Black. I'm going to have to admit. Okay, he's making a little bit of progress. I think the king is marching up. Uh, he does definitely need the king and the rook, you know, like to combine and in order to actually win. Okay, that's a draw, buddy. All right, as long as... Oh, my God. Okay. I think he could have just... All right, well, this is definitely a draw. Well, white made exactly zero progress in the last 20 moves. That is not what I was expecting, um, but but hey, once again, my point stands, chat. My point stands. People people don't play perfect chess. Your loss here? Hell no. Your opponent probably doesn't know how to convert this end game. That that's actually okay. So basically, what went wrong here was was the fact that um, after King G five, Knight D five. I don't think you can let your opponent push e3 like that so casually because knight and rook endgames are drawn as well as the bishop and rook endgame that we saw previously, which in which it was not a draw. So, you know, all kinds of things happen when it's speed chess. Endgames that are supposed to be won, don't get won. Endgames that are supposed to be drawn, don't get drawn. But it's always easier to say this from the perspective of somebody who's not actually playing the game. Like you guys never understand how much pressure these players are in, especially with so much on the line as we're entering, you know, the final stages of like a speed chess championship of the speed chess championship. So that was unfortunately not a great end game technique shown by Timo Feyev, but I know he's going to come back. I know he's going to come back. Let's do a quick listen in on uh, Ming Lei, who is currently, what is going on? Wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Am I missing something here? Is he just down? Is, is that a queen versus knight end game? I'm like looking in and I'm like, if he holds this, there's no way he holds it. Okay, yeah, no. Wait. Oh, he's just watching someone else play. I thought they were playing. Okay, sorry, that's my bad. Um, I thought he was actually playing, but shout out to Ming Lei. He's a very, very strong grandmaster from Vietnam. Um, and if you guys aren't checking out his channel already, you should be. He plays like some quality speed chess and all of, all the amazing stuff. Okay, let's stay on his, um, let's, wait, we're entering round four now. Let's, let's keep looking and see what is going to happen on round four. Okay. Hikaru is currently playing Sergio Chess. He is three out of three. His opponent is also three out of three. So we're definitely like getting some, some quality, quality games from Hikaru this week. I mean, we get quality games from him every single day. So, you know, at this point, how much higher can he raise our standards, right? Like how much more can he raise our standards? But seeing him consistently perform so well week after week is just like crazy because the way I play title Tuesday, some days, sometimes I go six out of 10, which is like my best ever. And then sometimes I go like four and a half out of 10. And like, it's, it's like, I can never consistently be like at that. And I, I'm just like, wow, this is shocking. Okay. Well, Hikaru's position is really, really good. Um, and not much is happening here yet. So let's go take a look at Chelsea Monica's game. Um, okay. All right. What do we have here? What do we have here? Um, White's queen is looking really, really nice on d4, actually. I mean, it can be kicked out by the knight on e6. Okay, we, we do see that move coming in. Uh, queen probably has to fall back. She is currently one out of three, which is not bad at all. Title Tuesday is a very, very difficult tournament, honestly. Very, very difficult. Like, all these title players are serious. They're out to get it. Also, with, like, a chance at, you know, winning big prizes like a thousand for first place man if you're not going hard at it what are you doing um okay but white white is going to struggle a little bit with development here that dark square bishop does not look like it's having a good time on c1 uh and of course that means that the white rook on a1 is also not going to be able to come out so i do think that uh chelsea has a bit of a better position here however it's still really early in the game and honestly with with you know, speed chess, anything can happen. But right now I'm, I'm definitely preferring um, Black's position. All right, we'll come back. Uh, let's see how Hikaru is currently doing against Sergio. Um, quite a nice position, I'm not going to lie. I think White is like very, very... 
I don't want to say solid necessarily, but I think that his king, while it's still in the center, okay, e4. I love those kind of moves. We push pawns. Those are what I call serotonin moves because you're like, hey, look, I want to kick that knight out of center. I want to get more space. I just want to push pawns. I respect that a lot. It doesn't matter if our king's in the center, and there's probably not going to be a lot of places where you can castle it really soon, but um, honestly, castling is overrated as heck. You don't need to castle. I, I literally played a 33-move game against the Grandmaster, and I just never moved my king once. So castling is way overrated, chat. You heard it here first. He does not need to move that king. Honestly, you can probably just play f4, f5, and run, and run black down. Um, technically, this position is not that great. Like the evil bar says, it's equal for the reasons that the king is still in the center of the board. When your opponent's king is in the center of the board and obviously trying to attack you, what you want to do is open up the position, right? If your opponent's king is in the center of the board, there's no reason to not, like, not open up those files and actually, you know, uh, get, get being able to attack your, you know, being able to attack your opponent's king when it's in the center of the board is super important but in this case i don't know if black is able to go is if black is able to get that because we're going to see knight takes g6 queen takes a6 is coming in the king is going to hide on h7 and we're going to see short castle from hikaru this is a pretty nice position for white i i do okay so this is one of those positions where it's not strictly like one side is better it's just an imbalance and an imbalance just means that you have things that are working in your favor, but your opponent also has things working in their favor. So in this case, the balance would be the fact that white, first of all, has the pair of bishops. Um, the king is a little bit open, a little bit exposed, but he has a little bit more peace activity as well. Black, however, has a pretty safe king on h7 now. I can't actually imagine a way for white to get to that king on h7, um, but he black also has the pass pawn on d4, and the queen is now a little bit feels a little bit misplaced on c4. I'm actually wondering if knight takes e4 straight away will actually work. I think it does. There's no reason this is a this is just a discover attack, right? Chat, um, white has to move the queen somewhere. If it goes somewhere kind of like crazy, you can just play knight takes d2. It's not like you're going to lose any material. Uh, we do see knight e4 from black. I think this is like maybe black's best shot. Uh, this is the best shot someone has had this tournament so far at taking down the warlord Hikaru. So, hmm, interesting, interesting. Uh, White's play here is definitely to you know maybe cause some issues for Black's king. We can, we're eyeing that g6 pawn. Black doesn't actually have a light squared bishop to defend it. But oh, I don't know if I like that. And I, I'm not sure because this f2 pawn is going to be weak. I, I actually like the rook on f1 just sitting there defending f2 um this is going to be one of those times when this f2 pawn is actually going to be like a matter of life or death for Karu. because that pawn like if you okay well he's using queen d3 to block the d3 move which was one of black's main ideas but i think i think yeah well queen f4 is probably the more active i was about to suggest queen f7 but the idea is all the same you just want to play queen takes f2 this is not looking too good Hikaru unfortunately are we going to see Hikaru lose a game is that going to happen guys is that going to happen <clears throat> I I honestly I don't think I want I don't want to see it happen but I'm afraid at this point it might actually happen uh, uh, uh. uh oh no Oh no, this is not looking good. Chat, this is not looking too good. Oh my God, that is a very, very ambitious move. I mean, his last chance is to realistically go for this pawn, but I just think that everything here is pretty much losing, right? Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said that way too early. What is going on? King to G8 was definitely the play there just to defend that, but... Oh, oh, does Hikaru have a chance? One second. Oh my, oh my God. One second. Oh my God. The time, time. Yep. Clock. Yep. Clock. Okay. Well, Hikaru looks like he can actually draw this game. I mean, it's very hard for, for, for black to actually do something in this position because of the opposite color bishops. Um, and also the fact that his clock. Oh my God. Okay. 
that was a roller coaster of a game chat that was a roller coaster of a game what the heck his opponent was completely winning we saw the evil bar at like minus six so like plus six for sergio and then um yeah and this is once again why Hikaru is one of the best blitz players well actually like can i say the best blitz player in the world this is why he's one of those players because he's able to come back from 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 that position like his king was like chilling chilling on like what like there were no pawns in front of his king and and why why was actually queen takes g5 not played i don't understand i'm sorry i don't understand why queen takes g5 is not played like you're just defending this okay anyways the point is his opponent make mistakes right you always you can always expect your opponent to make mistakes it doesn't matter if they're 2800 doesn't matter if they're 1200 your opponent will always make mistakes and you just have to capitalize on those mistakes and win like hikaru so that was a really impressive game played by hikaru um just the fact that he's able to like swindle and get out of that so that was that was some good stuff that was some good stuff okay let's see okay this end game is very very much drawn um I, we will skip it we will we'll skip that not a bad game played on white's end in this case because there is like a 200 point difference um let's take a look at how chess warrior is currently playing i do believe that is nordebek abdu satarov um a really strong grandmaster also really really young he's like 15 years old or something from uzbekistan okay i hope i didn't mess up the country um but yeah so he's a very very strong player this is also going to be an end game um i think that there's no way you can mess this up so we're gonna skip this game as well i always say that there's no way to mess it up and there's this thing called caster's curse or like whatever commentary jinx anyways and they end up actually losing the game and i'm like oh unfortunate but hey i like to wreck havoc um okay so not a lot of games are left playing and we do see abdu satara draw his game uh all right well that is that is going to be a wrap there is just one oh let's see let's see if this is actually going to be a draw this is supposed to be a draw this is theoretically a draw chat is black going to be able to hold this draw that's my question <clears throat> yeah if you guys like oh okay awesome they drew. Wait, how did they draw that? What? Oh, they must have agreed or something. I, I'm actually not sure how they drew, but um, I guess it was either 50 move or they, they agreed to a draw. All right, so we do have a six minute break between round four and round five. This is going to be really intense on Tuesday. It's already been a really intense title on Tuesday. Um, and once again, guys, just a reminder, this is one of the Speed Chess Championship Grand Prix. So the winner of this gets like, you know, bonus points and everything so uh we got a three minute break for me coming up oh it says repetition all right well apparently i just can't read chat it's fine who needs who needs that you guys can just tell me everything all right we'll go on break
right, guys, and we're back. Okay, so this weekend, um, so October 3rd and the 4th, chess.com will be running the Swiss, SCC Super Swiss. The Super Swiss is a 15 round tournament of three plus zero with the top 16 players making it into a knockout. It will be open to title players and has a $15,000 prize pool. Guys, that's literally like my entire tuition right there. The winner of the Super uh, of the Super Swiss also qualifies for the championship event, which has a hundred thousand dollar prize pool. Whoa! If you're a title player, like I'm expecting so many title players in this. Honestly, you know, you know what? Wait, can I play? Am I allowed to play in this? Okay. I guess my week. I guess I got plans for the weekend chat. Now I know what I'm doing this weekend. I'm gonna do it this weekend. Um, but that is a lot of money, and not just that. Yo, winning chess tournaments is hella cool. So, guys, stay excited for that. There's going to be so much exciting chess gameplay coming up really, really soon. Um, chess is chess is not toxic at all. It's actually not toxic, okay? But what are you guys thinking? Oh, wait, the poll is for me. <laughs> so, yes, student loans, easy. Yeah, imagine if I could win one of those. But honestly, there's going to be, like, so many strong players. Like, let's take a look at the standings over here with... All of these strong players, I expect all of them to be playing this weekend as well. So I don't think I stand much of a chance, but hey, you never know. I think chat's got a chance. If you guys all pull your collective IQ together, you might have a, you might stand a chance, chat. Um, but in first place, we do see Hikaru. Second, we have Indian Lad. I see Nepo over there, number four. That's just like his ranking in real life. Let's see if he's able to get that to number one. Uh, we got Karyaking. Karyak, did I pronounce that correct? We got Jigalko. Uh, we got Rasmus Vane, who actually won the last tournament that I casted um, with CLG. I'm um, just, okay. We got a lot of really strong people. Guys, this is going to be tight. This is going to be a tight tournament. Like, so the top 17 players still have four out of four. Bruh, we still have six more rounds to go, but four out of four with this kind of pool of players? <laughs> Damn, I that could never be me. That could never be me. Like, usually I get like four by the end of the tournament. These guys actually have like four at the start. Uh, I mean, sorry, not that start, around four. It's just kind of crazy. Well, we do see round five uh, coming in. And once again, we're like pretty much halfway, almost halfway through the tournament, I guess, at this point. Um, so there is going to be a lot of really, really interesting stuff coming up. Guys, gameplay, gameplay has been spicy. It's been really, really spicy, honestly. A <laughs> collective IQ of 104. We'll take that. We'll take that. That's still above average. All right. Well, Hikaru literally escaped by like this bit, this much last game. So that was a pretty scary moment. Um, nobody's invincible, right? We've seen that people, people are, are making mistakes. Hikaru has made mistakes, but you just got to capitalize on those mistakes and win your games. So let's see if some of these players are able to win their games and eventually win the speed chess championship uh but in the meantime let's do a quick tune in on see how diana is playing i absolutely love diana by the way guys i've known her for many many years um seen her at a lot of youth tournaments we we're like the same age or something i think we're the same age i don't actually remember uh, but she's got her layout oh i love her layout as well her position looks pretty good as well wait what's going on whoa 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 Whoa, I don't know about that move. Isn't your isn't isn't her H pawn like kind of oh no. I don't think she saw that. I just saw her face scrunch up. I don't think she saw her H pawn. Yeah, that H pawn is going to run it down the board. And run it down in the board, run it down on the board in a good way. Not the usual way, the good way. Because that pawn, I don't actually see how White's able to defend against that. Because like you have to get your king and like out of the way. I like how she's attacking. She's going aggressive. That's good. She's casually eating, you know, I'm not sure what she's eating, but I don't think this is looking too good for her anymore, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's a, that, that's not looking too good. That's not looking too good. <laughs> oh, she doesn't, she's losing all her pawns. Um, the, the black is, yeah, black is going to come for checkmate real soon. That is very unfortunate. Oh, well. Hey, look, as long as you try and you have fun in these events, that's what matters. Right, chat? It's all about having fun. All right. 
let's bring it back to the current position we have over here with Hikaru. Um, his position is once again a little scuffed. I don't actually know what's going on. Like every single time I like switch between boards and stuff, it, I'm just like, yo, it takes me a moment to like tune in, sit down and like think like, what is going on in this position? Like what are Black's bishops doing here? This rook is like potentially never leaving that square. Don't do that, guys. Don't leave your rooks on A8. And your bishops on B8 and C8, I guess. I mean, that part is secondary, but like, what the heck? Okay, so somehow Black's position is actually fine here. He's actually not doing that bad. Um, that must be kind of like surprising as well, just because of the total lack of development that Black has and the fact that White has so much space. Why is he not playing D4? Look, okay, wait. I said that White has a lot of space. This is Black's one chance to play D4, have this nice pawn structure, basically have a pass pawn and where White will have to forever keep this bishop on D3, but... This is the move he decides to develop his bishop. Like your bishops have been sitting there for the last like 18 moves. Why does it matter now if you move your bishop out or not? Okay, well, he's, he's actually just losing the ball. Okay, this this is this is this went downhill for black in about two moves. But but it's not over yet, guys. It's not over yet. This is not a for fun reach chat. We're not a for fun region. NA is serious. We're gonna we're gonna kill it at worlds. Um, but okay, so we might see f5 here if black sees f5, which he might not realistically. I mean, I'm just scared that he's gonna move his dark squared bishop as well, but thankfully he can't actually move it. Oh, he does play f5. Okay, good. This is his one chance because he's actually threatening to take the bishop. <clears throat> All right, well, if we see something like Queen, I don't even know. What what is Hikaru gonna do here? His bishop is looking a little lost, but somehow I don't think this is that bad for Hikaru. Maybe he has a chance of saving the position with Queen C4. Because then Queen takes H7, and then we've got Bishop takes E5, maybe. Uh there's a lot of things that could happen here. A lot of tactics. Let's see, let's see what Hikaru decided on playing. He decided on playing C6. Okay. Okay. Wait, sorry, did I miss something here? Why not bishop takes e5? Why let this knight stay here? This guy has made the, I swear, black has like decided to make the most inconvenient bishop moves. He played a bishop move on a move he shouldn't have and then he didn't play a bishop move on the move he should have. But somehow it's not that bad, I think. For black he can just take this bishop wait whoa 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 dude 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 i'm sorry can you just not take what am i missing here oh my god guys go to puzzle rush don't forget to do puzzle rush chess.com's puzzle rush system is actually so freaking good like like you need to improve your tactics if you're gonna play against super grandmasters i'm not sure what happened with black's tactics there but I'm going to I'm going to suggest that everybody here does some more puzzle rush. That was a really nice gameplay from Hikaru, though. That was a very nice gameplay from Hikaru. Um, I think we're going to make a quick tune in and see how Ginger GM is actually analyzing his board, analyzing his game. I really like this, guys. Um, usually, after every single game, um, well, as long as like you know you you're in the right mental state to analyze it. Because I understand sometimes you tilt so hard, you just never want to see a game again. And that's totally fine. But it's good practice, chat, to look over your games. Okay? Like, if you want or if you lose, especially if you lose, actually, it's always good practice to look over your games. Um, that's something you should definitely be doing. Because that will actually... In, that, that will literally, you know, it's supposed to improve your gameplay for a reason. And it does because you go over your mistakes and then you're like, oh, hey, this is where I went wrong. And then you know what to work on for the next game. Um, so I really like what Ginger GM is there doing it just in between games, you know, just catching his mistake as soon as he can and just try to get back into the next game, especially if you lose. That's, some, that's a very good strategy. Uh, all right, let's bring it back and just take, and take a look at how White is going to be converting this end game. Uh, and oh, I ah ah. Oh my god! I don't know what I'm watching. Um, Black missed a million ways to. Okay. 
Okay. Um, let's just move it back a little bit. Um, there was a few moves where Black had a pretty good chance, I think, at just, you know, a, a potentially making a play here. Uh, after king g4, he played queen g1. And then if king to h5, for example. Oh, wait a minute. It's not that simple because the, basically the point is that the the white king wants to make it up there. So um, it's not as easy as I thought. I thought you could just keep the king from going there forever. But maybe you can just go queen h2. And after king g4, you can play queen e2. Unless there's queen of three. Then there's queen of three. But why... So if you go queen g1 and then the king just plays there and if you now play queen h2 there is king to g6 but you can play queen c2. So I think that's actually the drawing scheme. So there is definitely a draw here for black. Black just didn't find it. <clears throat> so that was um that was that was a very close game I would say. I mean with so little time it's very difficult to find the right moves as you guys have kind of, you know, interpreted. But, but like, it just goes to show how accurate you have to actually play in these kind of events, right? Like, Black didn't, should not have lost that game. But hey, look, it's, it's, it's Blitz, anything happens. Um, this game is also a complete draw. As long as the pawns don't get pushed forward. Okay, I think Black has the right idea. He just needs to hold the position. White can't make any progress there. And we do have a repetition. That's a very nice game played um, from, from Black, actually. 2294 versus 2400 that's a that's a very solid win for for the women fide master over there um i do think we're going to be diving into game number six where we have we still have how many people with five points we still have eight people with five points holy that's a lot of people with still full points don't forget guys this is a 10 round tournament so at the end of the tournament um once again it, it's not like whoever finishes first in this tournament actually wins immediately there is actually a playoff um for for, for the event so winning a lot of games definitely you know helps boost your confidence shows that you're in good position but but i do believe the top eight actually do get into the playoffs so i could be wrong i think it's top eight top eight players advance the knockout brackets actually right up below me i can read yeah all right, perfect. Uh, so top eight. So you only need to finish in the top eight. And the way with the way it's going right now, um, I see, I see Gata Komsky in ninth. So he might have a chance still at making the top eight. But hey, look, with five rounds to go, anything could happen, man. Anything could happen. Okay, let's take a look at this from Hikaru's perspective. Um, this was a uh, Yuko piano. Um, I think bishop takes h3 would be a great move here. And I'm sure Hikaru will find it because he is that kind of aggressive player. This is one of those games where you're always like, can I take on h3? Can I take on h3? And you're like, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. But bishop takes h3 is looking like the, this is looking like the right time to do it. Um, at least in my opinion. Like if you want to go for something aggressive right now, this is this is the perfect time. Uh, your pieces are more or less out already. But you can also play it solid with like maybe bishop f5, but the, you get you guys get the idea. This bishop needs to come out. You, like you need to finish development at this point. Um, otherwise, otherwise, okay, bishop f5 is the more solid way of playing it. I really respect that too, but basically you just want to develop your pieces, attack this d3 pawn, maybe bring the queen out, rook out. Um, but I'll move, by move 16, guys, try to have all your pieces develop. Uh, and that's literally what Hikaru is doing. Yeah, that's true. White might reply with knight takes g7. That's actually true. We can get a lot of like really really interesting attacks here. Okay, let's let's see how uh, what Hikaru is up to. Let's take a look. He's already pre-moved King takes G seven. He's like expecting his opponent to play Knight takes G seven. I'm ready to place a bet here and say that White's not going to play Knight takes G seven. Oh, never mind, never mind. I take back my bet. He played it. He played it. Okay, good. I didn't actually finish my bet, so I don't owe anybody anything. So there were no subs on the line. It was, uh, it's good. Everything's good. I don't think this is supposed to work for black, for white though. Like this feels way too ambitious because black actually has a very nice knight on g6. It's not like you're just able to play bishop f6 and queen g7. Um, Hikaru is however shaking his head a little bit. He's, he's doing the side glance thing. I don't think this is like going to be an attack that. Okay. Well, to be fair, when it's a blitz game, anything can, anything can happen. Anything can happen. I've learned this the hard way. 
uh, of jinxing a lot of players. But basically, oh, I think that, you know, defending the bishop that way, I thought he could just take maybe. I don't know. I really like grabbing pawns. When I when I, when people started giving me pieces, I'm just like, yeah, if I'm gonna get checkmated anyways, I might as well be up on material while, while that happens, right? So I would have just grabbed the piece. But Hikaru's playing really solid. I think White's only move here is to play d4, and of course the idea is that hey, look, your opponent's king is kind of unsafe. C4 doesn't quite hold the same kind of, I think. Malice as maybe d4, but c4 is also not a bad move. The idea is quite simple. You're just getting rid of one of the defenders. This knight has to go somewhere. If the knight goes to anywhere, like b4, for example, I think c5 is actually going to be really, really strong. Hitting the queen and hitting hitting that bishop. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm not sure. This is actually becoming a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. You know what? I'm going to say Fandorin has a very, very good chance of winning against Hikaru in this game because this is like the aggressive kind of position that Hikaru does not want to... Like, usually when you're when you're playing chess, right? When you're playing Blitz, you want to be the one that's attacking. So, um, last time last time I said that Hikaru is was going to lose, he actually made a comeback. So, maybe it's the reverse jinx. Maybe maybe we need to, like, say that Hikaru might lose this and then, and then he's going to make a comeback. But this position is looking very, very unfortunate yeah knight g4 i mean sorry knight 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 takes h4 knight h4 here is probably his only shot on a second look because you got to do something about the queen right if queen takes h4 and then can you maybe move the knight i just feel like moving this knight is always going to get hit with c5 or even like just bishop f6 like this knight is actually protecting a lot of things uh so whoa 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 what oh we saw bishop takes f2 we have bishop takes f2 and then knight to f4. Okay. It's on, guys. It's on. White's attack is looking so strong, but we can always... And also 20 seconds. I've never seen Hikaru with this low time. Uh, I actually haven't seen... Actually, I haven't seen Hikaru with, with, with this little time. What the heck? Oh, my God. Okay. This is looking worse and worse for Hikaru by the second. C5 here. All right, we got c5. All right, this queen is done. Like, if you go here, you just play, like, knight takes f5. Check me. Oh, no. And Hikaru has actually resigned. Oh, no. We do see Hikaru go down. But, guys, guys, it's not over. The war, it, 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 this doesn't mean that the warlord is out of the possibility of winning this tournament. Remember, first of all, there's still, you know, four more rounds to go. Second of all, he only needs to finish in the top eight to make it into the, um, the, 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 the finals. Well, the knockout stage. So there's still a lot of chance for Hikaru here to make a comeback. Um, and knowing Hikaru, I have full faith in him being able to make a comeback. <laughs> so, all right. Rasa Svein is currently suffering. He's got a queen, but okay. Yeah, he resigns. Uh, Nepo is really, really good at playing in balance positions as well. Two rooks and a knight versus a queen. That's that's killing. That's absolutely killing. So Rasmus made a very good choice there. Resign against world number four. Um, and here we have Gadakomsky playing against Abdu Satarov. He is up a whole queen. Well, not a whole queen, but a queen for a bishop. This is pretty, this is looking pretty good for white. I'm not going to lie. I would much rather play white here. Um, so I do think that the 15-year-old prodigy is going to go down in this game. Of course, still very, very strong player. Four and a half points. These, these guys are both still in the running for, you know, finishing the top eight. Lots of chances here. Lots of chances here, guys. Um, let's, let's actually take a look and see how, I mean, this game, this game should be. Should be a pretty easy win. Okay, let's take a look at how uh, Smirnov is actually doing against Onishuk. Both very, very strong classical players as well. And now, of course, very strong Blitz players as well. I do think Black is absolutely rolling this position. What the heck? What happened? Whoa, 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 whoa. How did Black get so many pawns? Can't let that happen to you, man. Those pawns are going to absolutely roll you over. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at, oh, sorry. This is um, I Am Wonderful Time. 
Um, he's also a streamer on chess.com. Okay, and he's won by checkmate. Awesome, awesome. Two did at a perfect time. Okay, I'm just looking for a game that's gonna last longer than three seconds. Everyone looks like they're wrapping up their games already. Okay, let's just take a look at the whoa. Whoa, this end game is intense. Okay, well, white's very much winning. Um, we see that. Oh my god, can you guys play longer so I can like talk about the game? Okay, that's fine. Um there is no way that Black loses this game, right? This is, once again, supposed to be a draw. This is supposed to be a draw, chat. Bishop and a rook versus a singular rook is a draw. Just like how rook versus a bishop is also, also a draw. But, 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 if I've learned something from today, is that you can never trust grandmasters to actually defend their positions. Okay, well, if you swap off rooks, it's going to be a draw. Okay, I'm just going to wait for this game to pan out. Let's see, let's see. Let's see the expert technique. Nepo is currently on top. Chikalko is on second. Um, what do we have? Who do we have in third? Basharov? Basharov in third. Fenderin. Gada is currently in fifth. Uh, Vladislav is in sixth. Okay, we got some really strong people. Hikaru is at like, you know, he's still in the, he's still in the running. He's still in the running for sure. You just got to finish top eight and then you got a chance to winning this Grand Prix as well. <clears throat> that shield might play a win and end game. <laughs> That's true. Oh, all right. He lost the... Okay, perfect. Got a draw there, guys. Okay, one last game going on. Oh, this is supposed to be a win. But actually, it's not that easy to win with a queen versus a rook. That's something I've found out. Actually, I haven't even gone on these end games that often, but this is supposed to be a win. Let's just see. Um, uh, Do we want to place bets on if Black's able to convert this end game? It's not like super easy to do, but it's also not like super difficult. Oh, Queen H1 is made in one. Never mind, guys. Never mind. I take that back. We're not placing bets on anything. We're not, we're not, we're not placing bets on anything. Um, I'm I'm just never playing placing bets. All right, that's a very clean endgame technique from from black. And uh, we are going into round seven. Nepo currently in first place against Fanderin. Hog. <clears throat> okay. Nepo actually plays a normal opening for once. That's something I like to see. Um, and what? Yo, 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 yo. Am I allowed to call out? Am I allowed to call this out? It's not win trading, it's draw trading. But you know what? They can do whatever they want. They, they can do whatever they want. It's it's cool. It's cool. Hey, look, maybe maybe they both just want to go grab a cup of coffee. Um, it's totally fine. But there's no like Sophia rule in this tournament, which makes sense because it's speech chess. Imagine having to play until move 30 in order to make a draw. Like that would be that would that would not be really fun for me at least. Um, but hey, look uh they had a really quick draw we'll leave it at that all right let's see how Bacharov is currently i'm probably butchering his name so badly i'm sorry Bacharov. um again jigalko sergey 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 um currently with six points each if either one of the players win this wins this game they're gonna be in the lead so that actually brings me to the, my question I mean, the strategy in this tournament is not necessarily finish first in the Swiss part of the tournament. It's to finish first overall. You just got to, like, to win a tournament, you have to actually win it. But but the point is, does this potentially lower Nepo's chances to finish in the top eight? Like, is he so confident that he's like, it's okay to not play play that game? <laughs> but Charming, his name is okay. Yeah. So I'm just like, huh. This is kind of interesting. Okay. Well, anyways, that's up to him. That's not my debate. I don't know what he's thinking about. He's probably got this whole thing planned out to like, you know, uh, the, the end of the tournament. He, he knows that like, hey, if he takes a chill pill here, he's going to get better pairings the next game and therefore he will make it in the top eight even easier. Completely up to him. But Bacharov and Sergey are actually going at it. These guys have not agreed to get an early cup of coffee. They're actually, they're playing out their game. Um, 
very very solid position this looks like this reminds me of a catalan was it a catalan oh it's a queen's indian okay close enough almost the same opening anyways um so yeah we I mean we're, we're just chilling here we're gonna see how this game pans out it's not the most interesting of games but these people are the like runners up and you know this is a game seven so after this one there's three more games so this game kind of matters chat it kind of matters um but speaking of that let's go let's do a quick look in at how hikaru is doing because he needs to win He's only at five. Okay, well, I don't want to say only like it's bad, but he is at five, which puts him currently in 11th. He's at five out of six. So he needs to um, probably win actually like the rest of his games in order to make it. No, I don't want us to have to, like he, he can afford one more draw at most, I think, out of his next few games. So he does actually have to pretty much win this game, honestly. Uh, he has 400 points above his opponent, but he's also 400 points above like everybody else so that doesn't actually speak for much at this level honestly it's all about making that one mistake if you make one mistake you're pretty much done for so you don't want to do that you don't want to do, do that yeah 8.5 is typically what gets you in that's why i'm saying he can't afford one more draw he's already lost one game so he can afford one more draw in the next few games uh all right well it's not looking too good for him honestly i, I like these bishops a lot I like Black's bishops. I don't see what this bishop is doing on a6. It's a little bit misplaced. And Black is playing really solid. He's just dropping his bishop back to g7. His idea is to not let white ever play d5, and he's doing a pretty good job of that, just making sure all of his pieces are secured, all of that kind of stuff. Um, okay, we do get this one a4 pawn push. He might be trying to look for bishop b5, maybe. Uh, I'm not really sure how Black is actually going to improve. Let's brainstorm here, guys. How does Black improve his position? How do you improve a position where you pretty much have, like, the optimal pawn structure? Like, maybe you can play f5. Like, mean, this is going to come down to, like, pawn diff. Like, this is actually going to come down to, like, pawn structure difference. He's not losing. Hikaru is not losing. Um, you could, like, play f5. Uh, well, okay, so Black did not do that. I think this is when he played d5. Did Black really just let Hikaru play d5? What is g4? Where is that pawn going? I was talking about d5 for so long because you need that pawn breakthrough too. I'm just going to play this out for you guys. Because if you play d5, oh, wait, there was maybe bishop takes b2 first. Right, right, there's bishop takes b2. But, but, but what's g4? Okay, it's Hikaru. I'm sure he has an idea. Okay, F5. That's This is very, very ambitious. I respect this a lot. I respect this a lot. This is one of those ideas I would probably not think about because my king is chilling on G1. It looks scary. Do you guys remember what happened last time when Hikaru left his king out in the open? Because I do. And it was not a pleasant time. But, hey, look. He's confident about it. And that's that that's good enough for me, guys. That's good enough for me. Um, I probably just like rook to f1 would have been better here. It's not like you really need your rook on e2. I know he wants to take this pawn, but but like that pawn's not going anywhere, right? Okay, his opponent's kind of low on time. Okay, this 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 will probably be a Hikaru win. This is gonna be a Hikaru win. The time diff is too big. Like Hikaru will like time trouble this guy. Uh, queen takes a4. All right, this is completely winning now. Mm -mm. He just needs to defend h3. I mean, sorry, play play h3 to defend g4 at some point. Well, he doesn't need to do it right now, but it's one of those moves that you can just kind of play because there's not a whole lot else to do. Or he might... Okay, he defended it. Good. He, he does give up the d4 pawn. Um, but I don't think that's a pawn you even want to take because surprisingly, the king is super safe on g2 and black's king is actually the king that needs a lot of protection and help. Uh, but king g2... One of those moves. Okay, bishop takes d4 is fine too. I think everything at this point is winning. You can play for the end game as well with queen e7. You don't even have to like feel the pressure to you know play for a checkmate or anything, which you can totally do. So he's just gonna consolidate this, play for the end game. This is a completely winning end game for Hikaru, and I think Hikaru is back. He's back, guys. He has a very good chance of finishing the top eight. Um, he has every single opportunity to finish in the top eight actually, and and he has actually won. So that was a very nicely played game by um hikaru okay and whoa i see two queens on the board and we see jikoko has actually won against um his opponent bakarov bacharov 
Uh, so, hey, Chicago is very clearly in first with seven out of seven. Nepo with the, with the, with the draw, you know, the, the calm coffee draw. He, um, he's actually in second place now, along with Fedorin, Fandorin, and Honest Chuck. All right, let's see how Godakomsky is currently doing against Porsche. It's a queen and a knight versus a queen and a rook. So this game, and and actually Gada is up a pawn as well. So as long as he doesn't flag, please don't flag. Oh my god, please don't flag. I don't want to trade off the queens. You don't want to trade off the queens in these kind of positions. Like a queen and a knight is actually really, really strong. Like queen and a knight have a perfect combo because they both cover squares that the other guys can cover. So that's why queen and knight is so strong. And that's why white is not completely winning in this position, but also time, 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 time. Time. Oh my god, he flagged. He flagged. That was very unfortunate. Flag was actually doing great here. I think you can just start pushing these pawns down, and there's actually not much I can do about it because this queen is like kind of dedicated to. Actually, maybe there was that, but then you also had king there. Anyways, it was a complicated position to play for sure. Um, but time. Yeah, that's why it's a speed chess tournament, guys. Okay, all right. Um, I'm actually friends with uh, Epi Episanko, Andre. I just call him Andre. Anyways, okay, that was very unfortunate. He's also a very, very talented grandmaster, very young grandmaster from Russia as well. It's kind of crazy how, how they have so many strong people, uh, players. Okay, let's see how Rasmus Vane is currently doing against Harsha um this is a draw as well all right we're we're seeing the end of round seven and are there going to be any more games all right let's just let's just see okay another draw i think i think this round is wrapping up quite nicely so let's just talk a bit about the standings as we can tell uh as you guys can tell jigalko's in first place nepo is in second with fendoran still on his truck as well, and Borsch, they all have six and a half out of seven. So those do comprise of the top five. And then we've got Hikaru coming in with Poultis and Liam Le. But there's so many people with six out of seven. And with three rounds to go, these rounds matter. Like, once again, guys, winning, getting the most points out of the Swiss part of this tournament is not going to be the deciding factor. It's going to be who makes it into the, uh, into the, into the upcoming bracket. Um, so the top four players out of this, wait a minute, the top four players out of this entire SCC Grand Prix will advance to the ultimate speed chess championship. So that's going to be the hundred K one. There's good. There's, there's just so many things going on here, guys. There's so many things going on. There's so many prize pools. There's so many, you know, basically you just need to win. That's a summary. That's the, that's the one line. That's the one line summary of all these events. Just win. Um, but yeah, this today is a 10 round Swiss, so there's three more rounds left. Top eight players advance into the knockout bracket. Okay, he just blundered everything. I mean, why was winning anyways? But I thought Black still had a chance, but this is just lost. All right, so I do think that that was the last game, and now we have a six minute break. All right, guys, um, we will be back in a few moments to cover the rest of the event. So three more minutes uh, until we come back. I'll see you guys really soon.
all right as we're coming back um for the final few rounds of the speech at share mission we just want to talk a bit about how you can actually improve your own gameplay so i want to remind everyone that our newest app for people looking for more feedback on their chest we got dr wolf over here um it will build your confidence with personalized chess lessons recommended for your level of play i love how i had to slide in the chess part we all know that this is for chess but download it now for free um there's the link in the chat or head over to the google play or app store i'm gonna be super helpful if you guys want to you know get more serious about your chess gameplay and i know you guys all want to so yeah make sure you guys are doing that um but we are entering the final few rounds um there's a lot of ways that chess.com actually makes sure that the gameplay is super super fair we don't we do not let the cheaters get the better of us so that's what this break is also for um but we're going to be entering round eight really 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 soon oh wait a minute how do i click buttons okay there we go um so for for standings obviously you guys already kind of have like, you know, as we're entering the last few rounds, right? There's there's three more rounds left, eight, nine, and 10. We have Jigalko, Nepo, Fenderin, Onisha, Boris, Hikaru. These guys are pretty much confirmed to like be in the top eight, but what about, what about all the people below them? They also have a chance, guys. Um, They also, they also have a chance. So I just want to like say that Jeffrey Shaw has a pretty good chance. He's currently in 11th with six out of seven. Guys, can you imagine six out of seven and you're not even in like the top 10? Like, like how does that, like that? that's how strong this tournament is. Six out of seven, almost perfect score, but you're not even the top 10. Um, that That's really, really like just kind of interesting, uh, at least to me, but that's, that's like how intense this tournament is. So really, really good gameplay coming up chat. Really, really good gameplay. Um, now we will be, probably taking a, a look more at like the people who have a shot at making it in, not in yet. Let's start with Liam Lay. Very, very strong player, obviously. Um, 29.89, I think he started like in the top 10 at the tournament. So he's making his way back. He's currently in 15th place. So he just needs to climb, you know, seven more ranks uh, in order to finish the top eight. And as we all know, the top eight, go to the knockout and that's actually where we decide who the winner of the grand prix is it's not actually by the points straight up from the swiss event so he has very good chances to win this position for sure he's he's got his queen out he's got his knight out knights out he's got a bishop out what is black's development doing black's development is like slower than me in the morning honestly like this bishop is not has no potential this knight can only go to the rim this king like there's nowhere for this queen to even like go i mean what is b6 what's a5 like none of those squares are looking good so this is definitely looking like a really really clean game for liam if he's able to convert his opening advantage however he probably whoa all right free pawn we take those we take those i don't know if you want to take that i don't know if you want to give up the the, the d pawn though for okay well that is not the way to go sir whoa 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 whoa, whoa. aren't you like getting like checkmated like like okay we can take there uh and then you threaten this right so that that looks like a this looks like a checkmate scenario all right hmm hmm um this is this is like not a great position for black at all we got queen g6 coming in. That king is bomb clouding a little too late. Like, if you're going to play king seven, you want to do a move two. So I'm going to call out Bachero for that as well. But yeah, no, I'm going to say black has lost this game. I, I, I'm just going to say that. This game is actually really interesting to look at, though. Like, you see what happens when you just make, like, a few moves wrong in the opening, and this is, like, what happens, right? Like I said, these guys are really strong, so it's not like they're clueless. Like, right now, it's looking like... You know, this, this would be a game where where I'm beating up, like, some 1,200 pleb. But, 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 you got to remember, these guys are only, like, 100 points different in rating. So, seeing, like, your opponent's king out on move 13 is, like, kind of shocking. Because Black did not play this opening very well, and, and that's totally okay. It happens sometimes. But that just goes to show how important it is to actually start out your opening. Oh, my God. That king is taking a trip. That king is going places. All right, well, this is 
this is like completely over. Okay. Um, before I start roasting this guy, uh, let, let's switch over to seeing how some other people are currently doing. Let's see how Jeffrey Sean is doing. He also has very, very good chances of making it into, into the, um, into the knockout stage. So, hmm. Hmm. It's looking good, but there's so much tactics here. His opponent's the kid, but in chess. For those of you who don't know, the kid is like a league reference to Void Boy, but yeah, I just want to make that reference. Anyways, um, Rook takes E7 could potentially come in. This looks like it could work, but you got to remember you can always take the queen first. If you don't take the queen first, if you take the rook first, then there's going to be queen takes C4 and you lose your rook on D8. So that won't look very cool. But, but Rook takes G6 out from white. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. There's like there's like three pins going on. Like this is a pin, but at the same time, wait, my arrow didn't come up. What happened to my arrow? Okay. Anyways, I can't draw arrows apparently. But but you guys get the point. So I think I think black is actually just up a piece here. Yeah, this is looking like a very clean game for Jeffrey. Uh, this will definitely put him into the into the chance to you know finish in the top eight be in the knockout and go for that first place prize, which also comes with a $1,000. Um, but we all know nobody plays for that, right? We're all playing for the honor of winning tournaments. But, you know, 1000 bucks sounds pretty good too. But yeah, I think Jeffrey Sean is going to be winning this game. And if he wins this game, that will place him with seven out of eight. Um, we see... We see people with seven out of eight already. MSB2. Uh, who else still has a shot? Dr. Bassam. Dr. Bassam, also a very strong player. There's there's quite a lot of people here who who do have a chance at making it into, you know, still the the, the top. Here, let's go, let's just drop it back to Liam and see how why is he not winning? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, he's not even winning. Huh? Wait, no, he is winning. What am I saying? He's up a lot of pawns. No, wait, I swear. Okay, this, that took a moment, but he's not as winning as I thought he would be. Okay, well, to be fair, I guess I guess having like a three pawn advantage is pretty winning at this level. So yeah, he's completely winning. I just like, I just expected him to actually be up like, you know, a significant amount of material from based on how that opening went. But yeah, I know being up pawns also gets you the win. So that was a really clean game. Once again, just goes to emphasize how out of the opening, if you're playing against like stronger people, you really need to get your openings in order. Um, yeah, and the skill of winningness, he's not very high. Exactly. That's actually what what confused me for a moment, for a moment because I was expecting him to be like up a bunch of pieces. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at Big Fish versus Alexander. Both players very, very strong. Um, White's king has taken a trip. Well, actually, he has not taken a trip. That's the whole point. It's sitting on E2. It's got, it's bonk clouded. The white king has bonk clouded. But White is completely winning. He's up two pawns. You know, his king is chilling on E2. But hey, that's not stopping him from just pushing his pawns up the board. And his opponent has just flack on the clock. So Big Fish is going to come in. Let's just actually take a quick run through and see how he got did he ever move his king? Like, apart from going to e2, did he ever move his king? Because if he didn't, then this guy's my new hero. This is the guy I want to play like. Big fish? More like stockfish? Omega lol. Um, all right, I really like rook d6. This is one of those very classic exchange sacrifice moves that you kind of play, because if you play this, you get E takes D6, and White has this amazing pawn structure, and this pawn is going to roll you over for the rest of the game because you don't even have a dark square bishop anymore in order to attack these pawns, and then White will play something like B4 and just defend the whole pawn structure. So I really like moves like Rook D6 because that just goes to show Grandmaster level gameplay. It's really, really important. All right, so White actually just never moved his king. He was trying so hard not to move his king. Oh, wait, he moved his king to f2. Never mind, never mind. I don't want to play like him anymore. He moved his king twice in this game. I only respect people who don't, who never move their king. I only, I only follow players who only move their king zero times. Um, okay, so let's see. We have Lechesescu, uh, we have Nepo at 7.5 out of 8. He's already in. Uh, Zagalko must have lost his game. Who else still has a chance at making it through? 
who else? Okay. I think that we will just take a look at Wonderful Time because uh, why not? Why not? Why not? Okay, so six points is a little bit far from the running now. Like, this tournament is so close that unless you have, like, 6.5 right now, you probably don't even have a chance. Um, but still a really, really strong player, so it's definitely worthwhile to look at his game. Hikaru. Wait, where is Hikaru? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, no castling. I only respect people who don't castle. All right, I'm not sure if I'm just, like not able to see things but apparently i just don't see things um okay hikaru is at seven out of eight there we go i see him he's back in the running he has he's probably going to be finished in the top eight for sure so i think we can definitely say hikaru will be one of the people we see in the knockout um for sure okay well unfortunately wonderful time has flag here that is that is unlucky that is sag Big Sash moment. Okay. I think that unfortunately Gata Komsky only has five and a half. So once again, if you don't have six and a half already, you're like way out of the running. That's how like intense this tournament is, but we're just waiting for this round to wrap up. And he has unfortunately flagged again. No, no, gotta play faster, guys. Gotta play faster. If you're not playing fast, then speed chess isn't for you. But speed chess is for you. So that's why you should play fast. What's that called? It's that math thing. Okay, everyone in my chat knows that I'm a math minor, but I'm kind of scuffed at being a math minor, so I don't actually remember how um, math works. But yeah, anyways, is that, what is it called? Anyways, if somebody knows, you'll get it. Okay, this is like a complete win for white. You gotta promote that queen. Tautology, there, that's the word. It's tautology. That's the one I'm looking for. My tautology is perfect, chat. Why is the pawn not just, could you not have just promoted there? Oh, or you can just take the queen. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry. Just take the queen. That works too. <clears throat> I'm majoring on the minor part, exactly. Okay, so we're going to round nine. And we currently have Nepo still, um, still in first. And we currently see Big Fish in A. So that's the cutoff, guys. That's the cutoff. Mm, once again, the top eight make it to the speed chess. I mean, sorry, the top eight make it into knockout. Um, and this final round is actually going to matter for some people, uh, especially the people with seven out of eight, I guess, because, wow, there's a lot of people with seven out of eight here. Okay. There's a lot of people. There's eleven people with seven out of eight. Uh, let's just let's let's just click on on this guy. I haven't I haven't tuned into MSB two yet. Who is he? Um. Okay. Well, doesn't matter who he is. As long as he plays good chess, we'll watch him. He's playing some pretty interesting chess at this point. I mean, his king is not looking very safe. Um, the king is, this king, white's doing a great job of keeping his king the center, but, but black, I don't know, I don't know, this king's not looking very safe on g8, guys, this is why you don't castle, I'm joking, by the way, before, before, before you guys come for me, it's a meme, and secondly, I do think castling is slightly overrated, but king safety is still important. Like, your king can be perfectly safe in the center. That's part of what being a good chess player actually is, is knowing when to break the rules. Like, we all know that the first three rules of the opening is to develop your pieces, uh, control the center, develop your pieces, and then castle. But, but, if you're a good chess player, you know when to, not, like, not do that. You know when to not do that. So, um, all right. Black's king is actually chilling. How is white going to make a breakthrough in this position? I mean, he really wants to get rid of this knight, so maybe a good way to get rid of that knight is to actually castle so then you can take the knight, but I do think f5 would have been a lot better there. I think a3 can come in now. Because the idea is that this knight is actually holding black's entire, like, position together, so if you get rid of that one, like, whenever you're playing these positions, you just want to, like, see where um, your opponent... Okay, like... What's knight d2? Why not just a3? Okay, now he plays a3. What was the, like, he moved his knight back. Oh, and he moved his mind, and he's moved his knight back again. 
I'm actually crying a little. I'm crying a little bit. I kept complaining when TF played in a castle. Okay, look, that's different. That's different. Okay? Like, he's a beginner. He's not, like, a 2,000, 3,000 rated player. If you're... You cannot violate the player. I mean, you cannot violate... You can never violate the player. Consent is really important. You cannot violate the rules unless you're at least high ELO. So, like, 2,100. Okay? There is, there is a meta. There is a meta for this. You can't violate rules unless you know what you're doing. And most of the time, when you're like 1,000 rated, you don't know what you're doing. That's why I told him to castle. <laughs> okay. I'm saying, I'm not saying I'm a pro, but I also said I'm above 2,000. So I, therefore, I am allowed to violate the principles of castling. <laughs> yeah okay i am not okay well to be fair this is oh my god what is this what is this if you play king takes f2 you're so screwed and this is why okay apart from the fact that white didn't castle that's not the mistake guys the mistake was the fact that white went knight here and then knight back he gave black two free moves to just run run it down mid literally he literally just gave black two free moves to run it down mid and that's why you have to like play a3 here because if you play a3 if the bishop moves away, right, you can just take on e4. Knight's gone. But but if they take on c3, you can just play b takes c3. And now if f5, your knight's on a nice square called f3, where you didn't do this thing. Oh my god. Okay, black won. I'm not surprised. But but like white literally just wasted like three moves there. Like what was the what was the gameplay? What, what was the idea here, man? What were you thinking? Like he, he he wasted so many moves. Like once again, a3, take. We get the same position, except there's no bishop on d6. So you can actually play e5, knight to e5, and there won't be bishop takes e5. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah. All right. It's okay. It's okay. Um, not the best game play from white. It felt it really felt like white didn't do a lot in that game, but it's okay. He, he's just giving his opponent a chance. So that makes MSB2 um, is currently actually in first with 8 out of 9. Well, that's only because I believe Le Chess is... Oh, oh, Nepo is currently playing Hikaru. Oh, so this game is actually going to be quite quite important for, for um, I think, both of them, actually, because the scores are getting pretty close, and there's only two games left. Well, there's one game after this. There's only one game after this. You're 1600, you play the Bond Cloud. Maybe that's why you're 1600, buddy. Um, okay, well, this is a draw, first of all. This, this, is, this should be a draw. We will see, if this is a draw, that means Nepo um, will be at eight out of nine, which puts him in, in tied first. <clears throat> we see Fandoran already with Big Fish at 7.5 out of nine. That's fine. I want to see how MSB2. You guys literally saw how he won. It's right here on the board. Right there. Right there. Okay, we'll go back a few moves. So basically, like I said, knight takes f2 happen. Knight d5 finally happened. There was a nice queen queen capture, and then there's this this nice fork. So, all right. Uh, let's see how. Who else has a shot? Poltis has a shot. Is Poltis? Let's find Poltis. Poltis is currently playing Jagalko. More like losing to Jigalko, but that's fine too. Uh, Jigalko is at 7 out of 8. If he wins this game, that puts him at 8 out of 9, uh, which is very similar to MSB2. We have a whole bunch of people. This last round is going to be intense, man. There's going to be so many 8 out of 9ers. There's going to be so many people with like the same score. It's going to be pretty in intense. Okay, well, White is doing his best, but also his position is not looking stellar. At all. This actually reminds me of that one game that Bobby Fischer played a long time ago against who was it? It was a very cool game, but this game actually reminds me a little bit of that one. Um, the king, the king's chilling on f1, just trying to you know hold this pawn from coming here. This uh this is one of those times when I say your king probably needs to be somewhere safer, but Chicago is also a really long time. Are we gonna get any yep clockers here? Yep clock. Both both sides have like five seconds or something. 
We're playing on one second increment, guys. Oh my god, this this is this is this is gonna be a mess. This is gonna be a mess. Okay, whenever these kind of things happen in Blitz games, you already know it's gonna be like quality because everyone's so low on time. Nobody actually knows what they're doing. We're just making moves. We're what was Rook takes C5? Like that was an instant, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't um, oh my god. We're gonna actually see Pultis. Maybe pull this off. This might be a win for Pultis. Okay, are we gonna see any more throws? Any more throws, chat? Nah, I think White's, this is too easy. This is too easy for White now. He's got the queen trade, just needs to take that bishop and then promote. All right, this is going to be Pultis game for sure. I was saying like how bad White's position was and then Jigalpo just threw that away without any concern for the commentator. Like, yo, give me some credit. Okay, like I'm not getting credit here because everyone keeps throwing. My predictions are all wrong because these people like don't don't listen to what I say. Um, all right, that actually puts Poultis with eight out of nine uh, shared first, and we see um, Jigalko fall down to seven out of nine, which means he's probably out of the running. He's probably out, I want to say, but. I, I actually, yeah, I, th I think he's just out. He's just out of the running. There's no shot for him anymore. Um, however, Hikaru is, uh, he has only drawn, he drew against Nepo. I feel like this is one of those times when Hikaru still has a very good, okay, Hikaru is probably still in the top eight. He's currently at seven and a half out of nine. So if he wins his last game, he's in. He's going to be in. Uh, let's just take a look at how Borsh is currently doing. I don't think that this game is going to matter. They're both at six and a half. So unfortunately, like all of the, you know, all of these players have kind of, um, Alexander, is that Alexander? Yes, Alexander, six points. Yeah, these people aren't really in the running anymore, but hey, look, six out of, six out of like, what, nine is not a bad score at all. All right, let's see how Anton Demchenko is doing. Also not doing great, six and a half. Could, could be a better title Tuesday for him. I think I've seen better from him. But hey, you can't perform consistently all the time unless you're Hikaru. So still really, really good score from both of these guys, for sure. Um, all right, we're just waiting for this round to wrap up and then we'll go into the final round of the Swiss portion of the... Uh, of this week's title Tuesday but guys that's not everything remember that there is actually a knockout of knockout portion of this event too so you guys will be you know having a lot of lot more gameplay okay why is like trying his best oh my god yeah these are painful positions to play like this is just losing but it's also the last game that was wrong it's not the last game um, okay, so we'll just talk a bit about the standings. I think we've got, um, so we already see four people with eight out of nine. Those people are basically confirmed to get in unless they lose against each other, I guess. But in that case, they should probably just like draw. Six out of nine is not a bad position to be in at all. Um, okay, so just, so Nordebeck is at seven and a half out of nine. He's, he's a youngster that I really want to see, like make it into the top eight because he has just some very interesting games. Plays very, very strong, obviously. And, all right, are these guys going to wrap up their games? Yeah. All right, we see, we have that. Okay, there's one more Rook end game. This is going to be a, this is going to be a draw, obviously. But we just have to wait for them. And then the final round of the title, of this week's title Tuesday is on. Um, if Hikaru plays anybody strong, if he plays anybody at all, actually, I think he has to win. I think he's in a must-win situation. Yeah, he can't just draw. Like, cause I feel like the tie breaks are not gonna be his necessarily in his favor, but he has to win in this final game, uh, which we have full confidence, of course. Um, the, however, the first four can go a little bit, be a little bit more relaxed, I believe. Like even a draw will probably get them in the top eight. But once again, guys, when you're in the last round, you don't know this kind of stuff. You're going for that win, so we're expecting some really tight fights. We're expecting some really, really tight fights. The rounds are about to start in like literally less than a second. Okay, they are, they're underway. If Indian Lad actually wins this game, he's gonna be the top eight. If Hikaru wins this game, he's gonna be the top eight. So this, this com it comes down to this game, actually. It actually comes down to this game. Um, I don't think a draw is gonna get, you know, a draw gives a lot of people with, for example, seven out of nine, a chance to come back in the top eight. 
<clears throat> it's like a 1v9 situation right here. Hikaru versus versus Indian Lad. Let's see. Let's see this game from Hikaru's perspective. He has this is the King's Indian defense. Oh, this is a Fian Fianchetto um King's Indian defense. So one of his favorite openings is pulling out a pet, pet opening which is a good idea when you're in a must-win situation as Black to, you know, play something you're really familiar with. However, I'm sure his opponent's not, like, completely clueless about the opening because he's also a Grandmaster in 2900. Um, so this is going to be pretty decisive. His opponent's spending a lot of time in the opening. I don't like that. That, that doesn't give me a lot of confidence in his opponent. But, hey, look, look, look. It works out for Karu. It really does work out for Hikaru. Um, all right, E takes F three. These are these are just like book lines. Hmm. Oh my god. Um. Ian Poltis Liam and Blue Bomb are in most likely. Most likely. So we're just here spectating this game. Hikaru is in a must-win situation. The game is kind of starting off a little bit slow. It's a little bit slow. Um, we already see... Oh, they've already drawn their games really quickly. So they're smart. They're smart. Coffee draws, guys. Coffee draws. That's what I'm going to call them. So the seven point half, seven and a half people are the only people still with chances to make it to the top eight. So that means... We should take a look also at Nordibek's game because if Nordibek wins this game, he's in. If Anton wins this game, he's also in. Guys, it literally comes down to whether or not you win this game. Like when you're under this much pressure, what are you gonna do? Like how do you how do you play chess under this much pressure? Like, are you of the mindset that we should you know play solid and wait for our opponent to make a mistake, or you're like I'm gonna go all in? Like what do you guys? How do you guys play when you're in like must win situations? Cause for me, I think I play more solid. Like, I definitely get a little bit of stage fright if I'm a must win situation. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Maybe maybe you just need to, like, go all in. Um, however, I don't know. Well, Anton Anton has realized he's probably lost a pawn if he plays this because it's queen takes d2, but he doesn't actually need to take that knight. He can play queen d7, which is a really interesting move because after queen takes d7, knight takes d7. If you play rook to d8, there is going to be rook c7, and then you attack this, and you attack the knight. So, uh, has he been doing puzzle rush? He has not been doing puzzle rush. Guys, go do puzzle rush. If you do puzzle rush, you'll beat these grandmasters easily. I swear. Like, half of the game just come down to whether or not you see this one move. It's not like Nordic Banks, you know, some, some machine, right? Like, grandmasters make mistakes all the time. Like, even if you, if it looks like a move that would probably win. Just have better tactics and you'll probably out tactic your opponent. So I think going all in is better than doing nothing and waiting for the loss, especially if you're playing somebody higher rated. I definitely feel like that's the thing. Um, you play like a crack and it's like all your pieces when you're losing. Okay, maybe maybe that's, that's actually fair when you're losing though. But at the start of the game, I think it's better to play objectively. Like forget the fact that you are in a must win situation. Just go for the fact that you want to win like you always do and play that way. Um. <laughs> well, Lightning Speed, at least you've won against a title player. Not everybody can say that. So, all right. I don't like what Anton did. He had a very good chance with Queen D7 just to throw that position completely off. But, hey, he's here chilling. He's not actually down a pawn. Um, but I do think Nordibek's position is, like, it's it's a very equalish ish endgame. It's kind of difficult to play, though, when you are 40 seconds to, like, a minute 40. Why would you get up one of your pair of bishops. Oh my god, bishop takes f5, sir? And then queen d7? Oh my god, he didn't see that. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I, am I tripping? Like, is this not just a free piece? You did puzzle rush and beat an FM today, so it works? Exactly. Exactly. Guys, Go do Puzzle Rush. If you do Puzzle Rush, you can beat 2900s. No, honestly, though. Well, 20, 2800s, I guess. No, wait, you'll beat 2900s. Yeah, if you do Puzzle Rush, you'll beat 28, 2900s easily. What? What was that? Why did it not take the knight? It's not like, it's not, it's not a very hard concept to, to see the fork. 
it's okay though. It's okay. I, I, I maybe, maybe it's the pressure getting it. But once again, this game. Oh my God! Why not play G four? Can you play G four? Can you play G four here? This is how. This is how. This is how TF Blade actually checkmated once, which is why this is so like permanently ingrained in my memory. But like, just get the knight out of the way. Like, this is a pin. There's so many missed tactics here. Can I like send a DM to Anton Demchenko telling him he needs to do puzzle rush? He needs to go do puzzle rush. He needs he he needs some puzzle rush. He has a premium chess.com account. He can go do some puzzle rush. I believe in him. Um <clears throat> this is this is this is being a complete. Honestly, I don't know what's happened. Okay, damn, Chenko only has nine seconds, though, to be fair. Now he plays G4 when his queen is no longer on E4. Nice. He definitely saw the idea too. Like I'm 100% certain he saw the idea. Oh my God, this game makes me want to eat sushi. Ooh, I think I should order some sushi. Um, okay, so. Whoa, whoa, pieces are flying. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Okay, he plays bishop E3. Um, 50 seconds for black. Yeah, like the time difference is actually going to make this game. Like he had to go for material and go for checkmate and stuff in order to make this time difference not so big. But when you're playing like same material, 40 seconds to two seconds, it's impossible. It's just impossible. Like there's no reason in this position. Oh my God, there is mating one! Everybody in this game needs, everybody in this game needs puzzle rush. Holy, what did I just witness? Everybody in this game needs Puzzle Rush. There is no point in me analyzing this game. I already highlighted every single mistake they've made. They just need to go do Puzzle Rush. Like, what is Rook to D3? What is the point of Rook to D3, first of all? Okay, I understand your rook is hanging, but like you can move it back. But what is rook d3? Oh, like, are you trying to take on h3? I don't actually know. Like rook d1 maybe? It's a check. Oh my god. Guys, puzzle rush? Question mark? Can we all get some puzzle rushers in the chat, please? Um, I think Hikaru is going to draw this game, which means he might not actually make it in the top eight. <laughs> you want to see the accuracy score you can pull that up don't worry that was an interesting game man um how how did this guy whoa 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 the moves are flying it's gonna be a draw though like it doesn't, it doesn't matter what black plays there's not a lot of moves he can play it's gonna be a draw yeah so hikaru might not actually make it into the top he might not make it into the top eight. Yeah, I think Hikaru is out for this time. But can we go back to this game and just say how crazy it is that 2,900 missed checkmating one. And also how crazy it is that Anton Demchenko literally missed every single tactic from G4 to... Okay, first of all, he missed every single tactic starting from here. He had Queen D7. He didn't do it. Okay, that's fine. I'll forgive him for that one. He missed Bishop takes f5 because he had to play queen d7 after. Fine, he missed that one. He missed g4 where he's literally aiming at his opponent. Like, he plays queen e4 for the intention of going for checkmate and he misses that one too. Okay, fine. Like, this game was just unbelievable. This game was just unbelievable. Like, like please, puzzle rushers. Puzzle, puzzle, blah, puzzle rush. Um. Okay, so... I think the final scores are coming in. We do see the top seven all have eight and a half out of 10. The top seven all have eight and a half out of 10. So then there's one. Oh, Hikaru is in. Wait, is Hikaru in? Is Hikaru in with eight out of 10? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Uh, this after top eight won't be calculated on all games and for tiebreaks to be set. Okay, that's true. But, but there's still a chance, guys. There's still a chance. Seven and a half, eight and a halfers. There's seven of them. So that means one person with, with, with eight points will be in. All right. Um, 
Okay, so we do see, I think we see the final score. And I think, unfortunately, Hikaru finished in nine. So that means Indian Lad is actually in with eight out of ten. So that's seven eight and a halfers and one eight. That guy is actually the dark horse here. All right, well, that's very unfortunate for Hikaru, but we will be taking a full six-minute break right now. Um, we're going to be getting ready for the knockout portion of this so that's going to be really really fun guys don't go anywhere stay around and yeah i'll see you guys in six minutes all right awesome
right, um, guys, we're back. We're going to be doing um, the knockout part now. So this is going to be really, 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 really intense. And don't forget for September, today is almost the last day for September. So if you're thinking about resubscribing to the trust channel, do it. Uh, do it now before it's too late. So yeah, the games are going to start any minute. Um, as you guys know, the top eight are, are here. Uh, we have Nepo playing against Naranyan. We have Fedoseyev playing against Leon Lei. We have, um, oh no. All right, I'm going to mess up this name. Guys, guys, don't don't come after me, okay? Don't come after me. Paulios Poltin Vicious? Okay, I messed that up. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm super sorry. I can't do names. I uh, got against them Chenko, and then we have Maxime against Matthias Blue Bomb. So a lot of really intense players, a lot of really strong players. Like these are people, <clears throat> guys, no, don't clip it. No clipping it. Do not clip it. Um, also, thank you so much, Ginger GM, for the raid earlier. Uh, huge shout out to Ginger GM. But we're going to be looking primarily from Nepo's perspective, because I do think that he's one of the favorites to win today's um knockout format especially since right now we're in the quarterfinals he's playing somebody with a little less experience than he has <clears throat> yeah well i mean sorry guys my pronunciation for everybody is really bad not just for for Palios over there um but nepo is you know over there he is he is actually also a streamer if you guys haven't checked out his streams already he streams at Fishal tv like chess is q um uh, Indian lad is SL Narayanan. Uh, once again, we're just waiting for the games to start. It's going to be interesting. I do predict my predictions are going to be the Nepo wins, but mm, actually, Liam Lei against Fedosev is kind of like a close game. So I'm actually not sure how that's going to go, but I kind of want to say there's four Russians here, guys. There's four. That's a lot. That's a lot of Russians. They're very, very strong, as we all know. Um, but having seen four, it's kind of interesting how none of them actually played against each other. So we might see an all Russian semifinal or all Russian final. We we don't know yet. We don't know yet. But um, there's going to be a lot of interesting things that are happening. Uh, Nepo is rank four. He's a really strong player, but I do think he's going to win. I predict that. Liam Lei and Fedosev will be close. I do believe they just play one game. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think they just play one game. And then they have to move on. If it's a draw, they play a bullet game. So it's going to be quite fast. And I think Demchenko is probably going to win against Palios. Palios? And also, I think Matthias is going to win against Maxime. So you guys got the predictions here, guys. I'm usually, I'm usually wrong, though. So I don't know what might happen. I honestly, I might be, I might be totally incorrect. And my predictions are going to be like, like with like the games today, my predictions have been so bad. Honestly, these guys need to like listen in on the stream to give me like a little bit of a boost because otherwise I just look like I don't know what I'm doing. But I promise I know what I'm doing. It's just that these players have been playing so unexpected, obviously in a good way, right? Obviously in a good way. So I do think Blue Bomb is going to win against um, against Maxine. Uh, once again, Demchenko is probably going to win. Liam's going to be my my go-to for for that for that matchup, and Nepo, of course, is going to be my big favorite to win this tournament. But once again, those are just words. Let's actually see how the players play today, because it doesn't matter what I say. At the end of the day, it's all about these guys. It's all about how these players are doing over the board, and we do have games coming in. Um, once again, Nepo is pulling out his hep move B3. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's see if this goes better <laughs> than the first time. Because the first time he did it, his opponent wasn't sure what he was doing. And he got his queen and had his queen up on D6 or something. So I think that this time Black has a better idea. Like, once again, just play solid. Um, you know, when you see your opponent do weird openings, first of all, it's Nepo. You can kind of expect that from him at this point. But when you see your opponent do weird openings, you just want to, like, develop and get your pieces out and not do anything crazy. Like, you might be really tempted to be going for, like, fancy moves, right? 
but realistically speaking mm, most openings are like pretty basically like they're they're decent openings like they may be unexpected and they may not be the best objectively speaking but they're still decent openings so um this is a pawn that you cannot take with a knight because you will actually probably get checkmated in, in in like two moves with queen g4 but if you also take with a queen this is not looking too good either in my opinion i think there's knight g3 here and then you can sort of go for bishop takes f6 somehow like white doesn't really need to be developed to still have a bit of an attack so i don't actually think you can take that well okay black has chosen to take the pawn once again a lot better take with the queen than it is with the knight but still um after knight g3 there uh, black is going to run into some slight trouble let's just see if nepo is, is, is going to do that mm -mm. let's see let's see what's going on here all right he does play knight g3 Huh. Okay. Are we going to see knight e5 though? So white's king is in the center. When your opponent's king is still in the center, what you want to do is capitalize on that a little bit. So in this case, it would be, you know, bring the knight maybe into the game in order to attack that king. Um, I do really like knight e5. Okay, bishop g4. Uh, we're just hitting that queen. Mm -mm -mm. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Uh oh. Um. All right. There is going to be Bishop E two, and we're just going to get castled. All right. This position is going to probably go towards um, something a little bit more better for for Black. I think. I think the right call there after Bishop G four was probably to just play Queen C one. Um, because you kind of have to like keep this light square bishop in order to keep a lot of your attack. But hey, whatever whatever happens, it's it's not like a bad position for white or anything. But it's sort of like you know you kind of have to win this game, right? But still, also chances for Nepo. It is three minutes with no increment, and that means that being up thirty seconds on the clock for Nepo is actually a very significant time advantage. It's it's actually it's actually a very significant time advantage. Um, all right, this is a time when I will question and ask guys: Can we take on e four? Are we able to take on e four here? Because the idea is that if you take on e four, you get d four after. All right. Well, Nepo probably thought about it, but decided it was too scary. So going ninety four is also a really good call because you can just go for. Oh my god, I can't draw arrows. Um, you can go for rook c one, but right, we're just going for the half open file here. So that's pretty good. And Black is actually, you're right, he's he's retreating all of his pieces backwards, which is totally okay. Like, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, he still has this very nice square to go to on d3 at some point. He just can't do it right now. But White has to be very, very cautious about that because if he gets a knight on d3 and you're actually not able to kick that knight out at that point, well, that's going to GG. I would not say Black's attack is actually over. There's still very good chances. It's just he has to be a little bit careful about where he puts his pieces in the next few moves. Um, let's take a quick look into Big Fish because I think Big Fish is one of the, I think he he has a very he's one of the players that has a very good chance at, um, you know, winning against Depo in the finals as well or or Liam Lay as well. So either Big Fish or Liam is going to be ending up winning this game. Wow, what a what a good call out, right? Somebody will win this game. Watch them draw, and then my prediction will be entirely incorrect. Like, imagine having only two possible predictions, like saying, hey, this guy will win or that guy will win, and then being wrong. They actually draw. Okay. But that is not to say Leanne's position is actually actually better here. He's going to be playing this endgame with a little bit of an advantage. I want to say he's going to be up a pawn, but, like, this pawn's probably going to drop at some point, so that's like not going to like be an extra pawn for very long. The best move here for white is probably bishop c3 or rook c3. Um, the idea of rook c3 is to hit the knight and the bishop at the same time. So if you play knight takes b2, then you just get rook takes c5 and this knight's a little bit misplaced and it'll probably go into a um, pretty equalish end game, I think, after a4, just because you can't actually hold all the pawns. But let's see what white does here. Plays bishop d4. Okay, this is a good call too. You just want to defend the f2 pawn. <laughs> this is not bad at all all right bishop b4 black 
it says, no, I do not want to trade the bishop, which is probably a good call because you want to defend this pawn as well. Uh, we're probably going to see like, yeah, king f1. Good move, rook f to c8. Want to swap out the pieces when you're up a pawn because that helps your pass pawn kind of like promote. So that's basically what black is trying to do. But this end game is still very much um, solid and kind of equalish. I don't really see anybody being able to pull something like completely crazy and turn the game around. So I wonder if this game will go to a bullet game. Okay. I don't actually know if like, huh, 23 to 25 seconds. Guys, they got to play faster. Let's, let's, let's do a quick look at how Nepo is doing. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is, this is a draw, but time, time, time. How did Nepo lose all of his time advantage? We got 90, we got 70, 60. Ah, he's letting his time run down. Oh my God, clock. This is actually like bullet time. This is actually like bullet time. Um, the, this, is, this is just completely, you know, whoa. This is going to come down to like mechanics, honestly. Whose mechanics are better? It's like a draw on the board, but like who can play this game faster? And I think there's no increment, right? Guys, th there's no increment here. So this is it. This is it. He Whoa, Black is uh, spending. Oh, it does look like there's there's increment. There's one second increment. There is. Okay, that's my bad then. All right, one second increment. Not a lot, but there's increment. But I've seen so many people flag despite having one second increment. So I feel like the increment doesn't even matter that much. <laughs> All right, King B1, okay. Nine seconds, five, six seconds. I'm just looking at the clocks. I It's it's like going to be a, you can't take that because then there's promotion. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's queen and then there's 96 and then you can take that. Oh no. That actually came down to the seconds and black slipped on the last few seconds. Oof. Oof. That is that is intense, guys. That was that was a very, very well played game from Nepo. It was very it was actually quite, you know, let's just take a look at how the last few moves of that panned out because I was calling out to be a draw, right? Like it's okay. Well, a draw might be a bit of an exaggeration because Realistically speaking, objectively speaking, white has the better position here since it's a lot harder for black to play as like that pawn is about to like promote, right? But um, with with very accurate play, this game would have most likely been a draw. However, as you guys know, since this is blitz, that's not going to happen. So the right call here is probably to go knight g2 and start repeating the moves. If the king goes to g1, you can play rook c1. Um, there is no way for this king to escape, but I think that Narayanan actually missed that idea, which is very unfortunate. Um, so that 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 is not that was um, a very well played game from Nepo, and unfortunately Narayanan was just unable to hold it out at the end. So there is going to be a bullet tiebreak between Big Fish and Liam because they actually drew their game. So I was actually wrong. I was actually just wrong about my prediction. I said one of these players was gonna win and instead they drew. All right, well, we do get a bullet game. So, hey, look, that's the perk. Your caster did not know what was gonna happen in that game, said one of them will win and was actually incorrect about it. So imagine having like literally three options of being just incorrect. And I actually called two of them out too. So I'm just very bad at predictions, but I really respect what Fedoseyev is currently doing here. He, he's got his calm, a calm look on his face. He's currently just, you know, I, I think this position is looking great for him. I like, I really like the ambitiousness of long side castling in the Gilko piano, which is not something you see very often, but sometimes when you have to win, you do crazy things. And sometimes those crazy things work. And I really respect that. So this is this is all the props to Fedo Sayev. This is the kind of gameplay I like to see, especially in a bullet game. Both players are going at it. Liam is somehow already 10 seconds down. I don't even know. Wait, is that? Whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened there? Okay. Rook, rook swap. Oh, my God. Every single move is, like, so nerve-wracking because I'm like, what is going on? But it was just a simple swap of pieces. I got a little bit overexcited there. I'm sorry. 
But this is going to be an end game where it's just better for White because he's up a pawn. Like, I know it's going to be a bishop and a rook. Whoa, that's a good move. Okay, we have to see queen takes f3. Now he's forcing a trade of pieces in his favor because now his rook gets somewhere active. His knight is going to get some, his king's going to get somewhere active. And then his knight is probably going to also get to somewhere active. Like, guys, this knight is going to be a terror. And okay, this is, this is going to be Vlad, this is going to be Fedosev's game, especially with like up to, up 10 seconds on the clock. You know, he's just, and then this is the time when there's no increment, guys. So I, what I said, there was no increment. I actually meant it about bullet, okay? I was not wrong. Um, but yeah, this is going to be Fedosev. I was going to wrap up this game really quick. Wow, that was, that was some impressive gameplay. Like, Fedosev didn't make a single mistake. Okay, he's just going to promote that pawn. He's actually just going to promote that pawn. I respect that. Okay. Very, very clean game for Fedosev. You see him lean back. That's brief, brief, brief sigh of relief. Very well played game. He does actually get the dub over Liam, uh, which means that, hey, it's very likely that Nepo and... Um, <clears throat> that was very impressive gameplay by Fedoseev. Wow, that was clean. That was clean. All right. I do believe we're going on break now. We'll be back very, very shortly. Stay tuned, guys. guys and we're already back so the first round uh we they don't play at the same time first of all so we do see matthias play against anton and he has chosen white pieces for the first game 
and we're already diving right into it, guys. So they played two games this time in three plus one format. If I guess if it goes to tie breaks, it's gonna be bullet again. But hey, look, a lot of games for us to watch. This is gonna be hype. There, this is this is like it comes down to this. Whoever whoever wins this one goes into the finals. And then we're also going to see Nepo play against Fedoseyev, and whoever wins that one goes to the final. So this is the semifinals, guys. The games matter a lot. This is this is it. This is where you pull out your big cards, and this is where you start winning your games. Um, of course, only one of the players is actually able to do that, unless they draw again, in which case my prediction will be totally incorrect for about the 10 millionth time this commentary session. But But technically speaking, one of these players has to come out. Um, on top at the end so I I'm, I am actually liking how black has treated this position he's being attacked a little bit on the king side uh Math Matthias has like tried to you know push down all of his all of his pawns and everything and but oh he pushes that up one more move I like it I like it okay so this pawn is actually hanging because this is a pin so you might want to play f3 here just to secure that oh or Or you can play king f1. I would have thought that f3 is the more logical move here just because you're using a pawn to defend that square and also stop your opponent from playing knight g4. But another way to defend that pawn is, is definitely king f1. He's not wrong. He defended it, but at what cost? Okay, well, realistically speaking, he was probably not going to castle anyways. So I don't think it's like a big deal to him if his king is currently on f1 instead of you know e1 where it can still castle so that's totally fine but i'm still a little bit surprised because i also think that maybe black could have actually wait what, 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 what happened here i think instead of playing bishop d7 i think there's knight g4 and this is just one of those positions where you want to keep your pair of bishops because those bishops are going to matter a lot later in the game especially with all the weak squares that are happening so um that that could totally happen however that did that black did not play knight to g4 and instead has gone for doubling his pieces up on the c file which was also a really good strategy white white needs to get like his king probably to g2 so we might see g3 king g2 knight knight f3 at some point from from white just in order to activate all these pieces he's gonna do a bit of manual castling which is totally okay as well but now we're just going to sit and wait. What what do we, what do we think Black's plan in this position is? It's a very for a position that is quite open. It's surprisingly close. You know what I mean? Like like there's realistically like these pawns are locked. These pawns are locked. There's not a lot of attack going on. So Black looks like he's going to actually try to push his pawns up on the queen side. I'm liking the strategy. White definitely needs to unta entangle himself um from 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 this position also i do want to comment on anton's camera that is that is very very cool i like that angle a lot i like that angle a lot he's going to queenside rush yes this is true queenside rushing this would be the right call here his opponent does play knight g4 and after bishop d2 queen b6 what are we gonna see bishop e6 f5 um yeah, this is not looking too good. This is why I wanted f3 at the start, just to stop your knight from being able to go to g4, because I think that if your king's sitting on f1, this is like, you're like a duck, right? You're like a duck at 100 range, and that's not, like, a good feeling at all, because this is just one of those positions where it's like, if you slip up, you're not going to be having a good time. You're really not going to be having a good time. And I think in this position, black's position is already looking really good, because of just how bad the king is on f1. Like, it's literally facing the rook right so when your opponent's king is in like the middle of the board you just want to open up the position and go for that king and that's that's exactly that's exactly what black's doing okay well knight takes e4 is not my idea of a great move white hmm. i was gonna suggest f takes e4 but i guess it doesn't really make a big difference maybe the right call here is to actually just play bishop f6 get rid of this knight because then you have one less defender on e4 and then you're actually able to take on e4 I think that would have been a five head move, but unfortunately, um, well, maybe fortunately for, for Matthias, he doesn't actually see it. So this is not as killing as it could have been, especially with the swap of the pieces. This, this, this attack might not actually go anywhere, but you can see now that if knight takes e4, this pawn actually gets defended, which is why it was so important to play bishop f6 to get rid of the defender 
before you go for the attack. <laughs> And yeah, I have actually changed my stance a little bit on the Castled King. Okay, well, to be fair, if the king was on E1, it would have been better than having the king on F1. So I don't even know. I, I'm still molding over this guy not playing F3. Like, why did Matthias not play F3? Why did he have to play king F1? Like, it was actually perfect if his king, if his king had never moved from E1, that would have been the best strategy, guys. Guys, king safety is overrated. Um, but, but, but like... Honestly, both players have misplayed this game a little bit, but it's really easy to say that from the point of a commentator. So I can't, you know, hit them too much for that. However, crazy things are going to happen. We got 30 seconds. Um, as you guys know, there's a one second increment. So that means we should see a little bit less flagging. But, but we all know when positions are complicated and we only have a few seconds left on the clock, anything can happen. Anything can happen. So... F3 was actually going to, was the right call there. He just didn't play it, which is fine too. But um, I, I am going to forever mold about that. If I, if I call out Grandmaster's moves, it's not because I think I'm better than them, but it's because I think they have places to improve as well. I'm just helping them, you know? Like nobody's perfect, but we can all work towards perfection. Um, all right, so if we see Bishop takes E4, Queen takes E4, this Bishop needs to come out like ASAP. Like ASAP, this bishop's doing nothing on H8. You're pretty much playing down a piece. Just don't blunder mating one. Okay, thank you. Well, there was no mating one technically, but but like we all know Grandmaster's blunder mate checkmates too. So I was kind of scared like something of that kind might happen. I do not like how passive Black has played the last few moves. I think rook c7 and rook to g7 is going to be killing. Why are you playing bishop d2? Like what? This bishop is doing nothing. Oh, he doesn't want to lose h6, I guess. That's fair. That's fair. But also, if you just play rook c7, like, you let your opponent take, and you take on b7, and then you march your queen down. Like, isn't that pretty strong, too? I guess it all comes down to, like, how how much, how willing are you to, like, take, you know... Oh, my God. Is that a clock? Is that a clock diff? Am I lagging? Am I lagging? I'm lagging. I want to know what happened to the clock. Whoa, whoa, guys. Wait. Oh, my God. I'm lagging. Oh, okay. The game is still going on. The game is still going on. Oh, this is a complete win for white. Oh, my God. Matthias has played a really, really good game. It's looking like there will not be two Russians playing the fight. No. Oh, wait. There's one more game. Never mind. That's my bad. They do get one more game. So, Matthias has taken the first game as white pieces. So, now he's going to play black. And, uh, well, he just needs to draw this game. So Anton is actually in the must-win situation. But what was that lag at the end? I, 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 I almost missed out on all of the... I actually missed it out. Okay, wait. Let's, let's run it back a little bit because I didn't see the last few moves. So let's actually see how White managed to convert that to... What? Uh, okay, that was unfortunate. That was unfortunate. All right. He let his opponent get full control of the um, center. And that's what, that led to his demise. But it's okay. Anton still has a second chance. There's redemption. There is redemption here. <laughs> okay. It's a very solid opening. So isn't C4 like hella good here? Wait, what was wrong with C4? Take, I take on d5, got to move your bishop away, and then I can take on e6. Anton might have missed a really good tactic, but we already knew from his game against um, Abdus Satarov that he needs to do more puzzle rush. So, you know what, I'm not going to call out Anton's tactics because we already know he needs work with it. What I'm going to do is actually call out Matthias's tactic blunders. How did he, like, let that almost happen? Like, c4 was actually a move that could have you know, want to end on his game, but hey, look, it's fine. We all make mistakes sometimes. We all make mistakes. It's totally okay. Um, all right, so White's pieces are aimed right at Black's king side. It's good stuff. Good stuff. We all need to do more puzzle rush, myself included. No jokes. Jokes on you guys. I'm I'm fine. I don't need to do more puzzle rush. Uh, Bishop a7, king h8. Bishop e4. All right, we're just playing solid. There's not actually a whole lot here. <clears throat> you don't make mistakes at all? Yeah. 
I mean, that's a mood. That's that's just a mood. Puzzle Rush is for losers. What are you, 1900? Probably not even. Uh, okay, so Bishop F4 is the recommended move here because if Queen takes F4, then you can just take on B7. And that's actually a pretty, pretty good move. Okay, well, he, he it's Anton. What did I expect? Anyways, anyways. Um, bishop c2 is totally fine as well. He just doesn't want to trade off the bishop, which is fair. He's got the pair of bishops. They aim nicely at his opponent's king, but he also has to keep in mind that his opponent's bishop is also aimed nicely at his king. So who's, whose bishops are going to be better? Whose bishops are going to be better? I don't even know. Um, all right, well... We're spending a little time here. Anton is probably wondering why he didn't do those puzzles yesterday night. Just, you know, really considering it. Um, actually, he was probably too busy setting up his fancy camera. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a very nice camera angle. He was, he was really busy set, setting up his webcam angle. Um, okay, so we got B5 here. All right, A3. So Black would really like to move this rook over, but I don't think he can do it because of the bishop on c1. So he's going to have to go about this position some other way. Kind of curious as to what 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 the breakthroughs in this position are going to be because I feel like e5 is one of those, but um, e5 is, is one of the breakthroughs because you just want to open up that file, but it has to be like really, really well planned out. So we'll probably just see something like rook, rook back to d7. Yeah. And we want to open up this diagonal, like keep the pieces just active, but not really doing anything. Like you're just trying, to, like at this point, white is actually responsible for not trying to make his position worse. That is a move that actually makes his position worse because e5 is a move. Why, what, what, what? The king is doing fine on h8. Why do we move it to g8? All right. Well, the king decided to go to g8. It's going on a little trip. Um... Still totally, I think, I think I like Black's position a little bit better here just because he's better coordinated. I feel like it's easier to make moves from, from Black's point of view. Uh, this is, this is looking fine. This is looking totally okay. Um, I don't actually even know, like, I'm so hard for White to make a move here that doesn't, like, you know, drop the position. Something you could probably consider is playing Bishop A2, maybe set up something on E6. But even then, that's like wishful thinking. Maybe at this point, you just play Bishop C2 back and forth, back and forth, and wonder what Black's going to do. But he also knows he can't actually draw this game because he has to play for a win, right? Since Matthias is... What? I'm sorry, sir. Moving your rook away from the one open file you have in the position is not the right call. Like, it's not the right call. What is that rook doing on c1? I thought we were trying to win this game. Or maybe that's just me. Maybe I would just want to win this game. Wait, his entire idea of that was just play knight f3 in order to take... That doesn't make sense to me. I think his idea of playing rook c1 was to be able to play knight f3 so when the bishop took on e3, he could take back with the queen. But that doesn't, that doesn't really make sense. Like, why would that? Okay. Anyways, well, this position is pretty unwinnable for white. It, it's pretty unwinnable. I'm going to have to admit, it's like going to be a draw, especially if you repeat the rooks. But you probably just take, take, and then queen d6. Oh, no, not queen d6, because then you get rook d1. But you might have something like, um, can you even play? You can play rook d2. I think at this point, like, black is pretty solid. And white only has like 20 seconds left on the clock. So <laughs> trading off every piece, disrespect. No, it's totally okay. <laughs> white just trying to get through this for sure. Yeah, I. it's not a great position for white. It's really not. It's going to be roughly, you know, a draw. If anything, black's, black has the upper, upper end here. I mean, upper side, upper end. Better position. I don't even know how to speak English at this point, but... But black is doing pretty good. Like, this pawn is going to be a weakness as well. So, first of all, you can't take because your bishop is sitting on c2. So, if you play rook c1, right, trying to defend this, take, take. Um, oh, queen takes as well. Okay, this is just asking for a draw. There is, like, 
zero ways you can win this position. Like, like at this point, I mean, to be fair, Blue Bomb has played very, very well, played very, very solid against Anton. Anton's tactics has just not been there. So this is going to be a draw, and we're going to see um, a Blue Bomb Matthias advance into the finals for sure. Um, there will not be tie breaks for this one. I'm already calling it, guys. Five seconds as well. This is not a great scenario for White to play a must-win situation where you're not up anything. Not up anything. Uh, yeah, no. This is, yeah. It's going to be a draw. That knight is super solid on C6. Like, we would need a miracle for White to throw this, for, for Black to throw this game, actually. Okay. Okay. Two seconds. All right. Well, we might see a flag. Are we going to see a flag? Remember this one second. Oh my God. Wait, this is winnable. This is winnable, guys. No, he missed King D4. He had to play King D4 here. Playing King D4 ensures that your opponent can't play E5, which means your, your opponent's king can't go over to, to defend the pawn. It was winnable for like a move. Oh my God. Did I just lag out again? Why is it doing this to me? All right. Well, now it's no longer winnable. And I think Anton has actually lost some time. Well, that was um that was that was a very, very intense game. Matthias actually did mess up a little bit over there. So I'm just I don't know why it's doing this, but let's see what happened. Okay, well, G takes. Huh? All right. Well, as, as I was saying, after 97, could have played, could have played King D4 in order whoops could have played king d4 in order to not allow e5 but he played bishop d7 instead which allowed e5 and that meant the knight could come back up to d5 just defend that and after this the position is unfortunately just lost and anton did lose on time so we are going to be going into um the other game which is between nepo and Fedoseyev, which is going to be really good. The clocks are... Uh, what is going on here? What does this button do? That's not the button. I might have disconnected. Okay. Here we go. We're finally caught up. All right. Well, now we're going to be, be seeing um, Nepo versus Fedoseyev. This is the other semifinal game. And whoever wins that one is going to be making it into the finals. So it's 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 going to be intense. It's going to be super, super intense, as always. Um, once again, two Russians, they've played each other many, many times. It's going to be a crazy game, guys. All right, the games are ready. And Nepo has picked the white pieces for the first game. Oh, we see the Spanish. Oh, I like this. I like this. Okay, the D3 Spanish, um, basically just avoiding the Berlin because usually, usually on move three, you get hit with the A6, but Knight of six is trying to go to the Berlin. Nepo is like, nah, I don't want that. I'm playing white pieces. I think I can win against you. So this is going to be, we, we already know Nepo's out for, out for blood. Um, okay. This is going to be fine, guys. This is this is going to be an intense game because Nepo's going going at it. Like he wants the dub, which makes sense because he's playing white. And usually, when you play white, you have more initiative and you're trying to go for the win. But Bishop B4 here. Uh, let's not forget that White is currently attacking the dark squared Bishop. That his pawn on E4 is actually also hanging. So playing Bishop D2, it's going to be a swap of pieces. Bishop takes, and then one of the knights has to take back. Hmm. All right. I am, this is definitely my favorite opening. This is this is definitely my favorite opening. Chat already knows, chat already knows. People people who watch me play chess already know that the Spanish is my favorite opening. So I'm definitely feeling it. I'm feeling this a lot. Mm -mm. Fedo Seyev is definitely very sound. These are both 3,100 rated players. Chat, that's all like three times you guys rating. Um, but okay, so black is also going on the offensive. I, I was honestly going to say like white is probably the one that's going on the offensive here, but it's actually, 
it's actually going to be black that goes on the offensive. You wish it was only three times the rating? Darn. Darn. <laughs> okay. I also really like Fedo Sam's name because his name is Big Fish and my name is Nemo, so I'm technically a fish as well. Anyways, we're going to go for Queen to H7. This is this is the classic trick. Is Fedo Sam going to see it? He's 100% going to see it. It's just, whoa. He let Queen H7 happen! Okay, this is not good for him. Like, knight, knight, like knight will go up? Whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, he's gonna see it, and then he didn't see it. Well, okay, maybe he saw it, but he was like, this is gonna be fine, but. Even I saw that, guys. Even I saw that. Even I saw Queen of was gonna happen. Once again, you guys already know why I always see Queen of I'm still traumatized from the time that freaking... Anyways, anyways, you guys already know why I know Queen H7 was going to happen, but I honestly thought Black was going to do something about it. I honestly, I genuinely thought that, like, Queen H8, Queen of 6 uh, like, you're losing, like, all of these pawns really soon. Like, really, really soon. This is, I am really, I'm just, like, shocked right now. I'm really shocked. He must have seen it, but like, why would you not do something about it, right? Like, like if you see Queen H7 hitting you, it's not, you already, like there's no way that Queen H7 would be a bad move because it's gonna, whoa, I like this. I respect this Nepo. This is the kind of Nepo gameplay I like to see. We'll disregard the fact that he could have played Queen H8, Queen F6 and taken every single pawn on Black's king side. He's gonna go for the Bishop sack. This is, this is what I like. This is what I like. Nepo is definitely learning from TF Blade. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, we see Rook E3. Got to get Rook F3 probably here. Uh, maybe we'll play. We'll see some Knight F4 in order to block that. That's like pretty much your only move at this point. I really like Rook AU1. Um, it's, it's going to, you know, just set up this palm push. It's going to set up a lot of things, just really solidify your position and also get your last piece into gameplay. You actually don't need to do a lot of things here as white. There are like, like so many things you can do, but you don't need to do anything. As long as you don't play Rook F3, you're chill. Because if you play Rook F3, this queen takes E5. So you're actually playing Rook one to just like, you know, slow the position, not slow the position, sorry. You're solidifying the position and then threatening something like that. But we do have queen h8, queen f6, and there is actually mate in one. Sorry, what? What? I look away for five seconds. Why was king f7 not played? How did he lose in two moves? Three thousand one hundred, by the way. But like, like, uh, 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 uh. he could have played king of seven. What was wrong with king of seven? Like, what was wrong with king of seven? Like, nothing was wrong with king of seven. I'm like, just trying to replay that position in my mind. There was nothing wrong with king of seven. There was no checks, nothing. Why did he have to go get checkmated in two? Like, if you play king of six at that point, you can go king g8. It's fine. I'm over it. I'm over it. Well, we all know that we should go do some puzzle. Guys, if you do puzzle rush, you can find checkmate in two against super grandmasters as well and then beat them in speech chess, guys. Right, right, right? Go, go do some, go do some, uh, He's not even 3,100 now. That's true. Huh. There was point. There was actually point in defending further. That game position was not lost. Nepo had just sacrificed the bishop. There was every single point to not get checkmated in two. Even if you're lost, don't get checkmated in two because you never know. It's speed chess. People blunder. But I'm over it. 
I'm over it. Uh, we'll see this from Beto Sam's point of view because he he needs to win this game in order to have a chance of making it to the finals. Unfortunately, it's looking a little bit over for him. He missed spending too. Not a lot of things can be beating you. Um, anyways, okay, so this is actually a pretty typical Nidorf. We've got the really classic pawn structure in the center where black has that structure and the white has these two pawns. So basically, it's a worse pawn structure for black. This end game is pretty decent for black, actually. So that's one of his ideas. Um, but surprisingly, black's king is like quite solid on jade. I play this position as black, I would know, but white always has like really good chances of like f5 and e5 pawn pushes. So, hmm. just want to play like f5. Why not just f5? f5. What was wrong with f5 f5 is such a classical move in these kind of positions because you just want to like white's king black's king is not safe you want to get that king like if you play f5 we're just never gonna see f5 are we f5 please <laughs> let's see f5 because like you can't even push e5 since you can take on f7 like it's it's such a good move Are we gonna see f5? Is he thinking for 40 seconds so he can play f5? Pause champ. He did it. He did it, guys. It doesn't matter if the queen is on e5 at all. Like that queen's not going anywhere. Okay, queen f4. Or or that too. You can play queen f4 at any time to get rid of it. Okay. Pause champ. This position is pretty good for white, honestly. Um, the only worry is that I understand white's worries about the position because traditionally speaking, these end games are good for black. But I think this is just one of those positions where you have to commit to the end game already. Like white's not going to be able to get an attack out of this position. So you commit to the end game where you're still slightly ahead. You take advantage of the fact that black has a worse pawn structure. He's got three pawn islands. You only have two. And the fact that the bishop on e7 will not be very useful for quite a while. But he does play f5. He plays queen f4. And I'm starting to like this position a little bit more for white. Um, okay, rook c5 is a really good idea. Because if you take on e5, he's going to take back with the rook. You definitely do not want to take back on there with the pawn. So, so rook c5, very good move. Very good move. Now I'm just thinking, maybe you want to go queen, yeah, queen f2. Just retreat that. Um, and just, just keep it there. It's not like black can make significant amounts of progress, in my opinion. So you don't have to like go very fast with this game. <clears throat> Fedo Sayev has entered the top four of the SEC Grand Prix standings. Ooh, hog. No, black is totally fine here. Oh, why would you take with that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, 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 sorry. What? What? Is the natural move rook takes c3 not good enough? Like, then you take and then you play rook takes because if this happens, then you can play queen b6. Or if there's queen takes, you can take... Uh, you don't even need to do that. You can just play queen b6 anyways. Why was the pawn used to take that? Okay. I, I have a million questions that I probably will not get to ever ask these players. And that's totally okay. White could have just taken that. White should have just taken that with the rook. There was no reason to take it with the pawn because taking it with the pawn just ruins your complete your king size structure so badly. Like this is so bad. This is the one thing I was worried about having this like like having a worse pawn structure, especially the, what we're down in exchange now too. Wait, why did we? Why did we take on e4? We could have taken on h3, for example. Oh, that's fine. None of my business anyways. Why do I care? Okay, well, there's actually a chance to draw this position, not if you take that pawn. <clears throat> 
Okay. I think you can just play queen e7 here and go for the checks. I could be wrong, but I think queen e7 is looking pretty good here. Because especially if he plays queen to b7, try to stop the check, you can just take on f6. So you got a really nice pawn and you can take this one as well. And, and additionally, if the king just goes to b6, you can also take on f6. So. Not the most impressive game played from um, Fedoseev, in my opinion. He could definitely have done better. I think he missed like a lot of ideas in this game. Like I understand him being low on time, but I think Queen E7 was quite a natural check to to play because like the idea is simple. You either you know perpetual check your opponent or you take on F6. So. It was not a very impressive game played by Fedoseyev. He definitely tried. He had his good moments. He had his chances and he missed them. And that is going to be Nepo with a 2-0. 2-0, guys. Going to the finals. Nepo looks like he's in really, really good form. Uh, we're going to be seeing... He played on a... Yeah. Um, all right, Blue Bomb has chances against Nepo. It's going to be quite intense. Ooh, two two O's going into the final round. I think I think Fedo Seyev, well, it wasn't even the draw. Like I think that was his best chance of winning the game too. But either way, either way, I Fedo Seyev could have played better and I definitely have full faith in him in his next title Tuesday as well. Unfortunately, this is where it's going to be the end for him. I do believe he still gets cash prize, so that's not bad at all. But we are going to be going on a quick break. We'll see you guys in a moment. All right, see you guys soon.
right, guys. So we're back. Um, Nepo and Matthias are both like, you know, chilling a little bit there. We see Nepo with his, is that, is that he's just like chilling on a sofa. I really respect that. So we got a best of two here, guys. Um, three plus one, same time format as before. This is going to be intense. These these guys have been playing for like hours, for three hours now already. Uh, they're definitely, you know, they're using the last bit of their energy to find out. They're going to play their best games and they're going to see, and we're going to see actually, who the winner for today will be. Jan has actually chose white as his first game, for his first game. So we're going to be seeing something pretty intense from him because we know that as when you play white, usually you're going for the attack, right? Like you're going for the for the win. He looks like he's kicking it back. He's chilling a little bit there, um, just just kind of relaxing, trying to get a little bit more, you know, oomph for this game. So it's going to be intense. All right, guys, it's going to be exciting. Let's get let's get some pogs in the chat um for the final two games of today's title tuesday today's grand prix oh and we have b4 first move of all the openings i could have guessed he would play b4 was not on that list so guys this is gonna be great this is gonna be absolutely great we already have b4 on the board we had b4 first move on the board hell yeah this is what i like to see in my title tuesdays okay Super Grandmasters pulling out the old B4 from his back pocket. This is going to be awesome. All right, he plays Bishop G3. That's not actually where I like the bishop to go. I think he should go back on the Fianchetto. But hey, look, um, the Eval Bar is actually liking Black's position a lot here. I do truly believe the bishop should have stayed on B2. I think I think this diagonal is kind of important. Uh, but it's it's totally fine. It's it's totally fine. I I I have faith in Nepos you know, opening choices. And the bishop goes back to f4. This is once again why I say that bishop probably would have been better on b2 because it's going to get kicked around a little bit. Like, you really need that dark squared bishop, honestly. You don't want to give up the pair bishop this early on in the game because that just means that your, you know, your pawns are going to be a little weak, especially since you haven't actually pushed the pawns up at all. Um, all right, we see c3, kind of a forced move, hitting that rook. Blue Bomb is going to go on the offensive, I predict, with a move like g5. This is the perfect opportunity. Kick that bishop a little more. Show that, show, show Nepo why this bishop should have actually gone on to b2. Show him. He plays g5. What did I say, guys? What did I say? Yeah, and this is why that bishop should have been on b2. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. Okay, this is not looking good. I, I like a6 here. This knight is not doing a whole lot on b5. Uh, just just ask him, where's this knight going to go? Are you going to go to c7? In which case, you can just play knight takes g3, uh, where you will actually be losing a piece. Or is the knight going to go back? And if the knight just goes back, well, h4 actually traps your bishop. So I'm not entirely sure. Like, you see how this entire game kind of like the issues for Nepo have already started. Okay, h4 immediately doesn't win the bishop because you have bishop c7. That's why I was a huge fan of playing a6 first to kick it out. But it's not, not actually too late to play a6 because if you play a6, bishop takes a5, then you can play a takes b5, and this bishop is still a little bit misplaced. It can go back to c7 for sure, but go to queen e7, and this bishop is really, really running low on moves it can play. So instead of that, you can play a6, right? And um, this is this is actually what Matthias has done. And I do think that we're going to be seeing quite a big material disadvantage coming in soon. Any any truers? Okay, he's he's hanging on by a thread. He's like, Nepo is like, yeah, I kind of realize I'm gonna lose this bishop, but I'm just like gonna give black a little bit of annoyance. Um, I think g4 would be really strong here. So the one good thing that Nepo is doing is making moves fast. When you're worse in a position, just make the moves fast, your opponent will feel pressured. So Nepo is actually like <clears throat> giving us a really, really good example of how to like play speed chess, even when you're behind. So that was, so, so he doesn't actually end up losing the whole piece. Um, Blue Bomb used a little bit too much time there trying to figure it out. He did not unfortunately find the best move, which was G4, just keep attacking White's pieces and one of them is gonna fall eventually. Do not find that. So this position is actually redeemable. This is comba comebackable, Complete, completely comebackable for Nepo. And with one minute on the clock, 
blue ball is going to run into some serious trouble soon because he he probably feels like he should have won this game a lot earlier because like his position was so good right but now it's like going to end game we're going to attack doesn't mean as much so he has to like consolidate his position and like try to like you know still he's still well okay uh, he was slightly better not after that move not 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 when white can play rook b5 but this was going to be blue bomb's game but now it's like you can feel it slipping away from him just remember guys these guys are playing for not only a thousand dollars but also for a potential spot in the one thousand in the hundred thousand dollar prize pool tournament the ultimate speech as championship so there's a lot on the line here but of course there is there is 1k very specifically for today um blue bomb with 20 seconds left on the clock nepo actually with almost two minutes rick c5 is playable here i like rick c5 nepo just realistically has to like you know give black a bit of trouble I think the most accurate way to play this kind of position is to like keep annoying black. Okay, rook takes f5, rook takes d2 is going to head into a draw. Just don't get checkmated in one. Please play h3 or something. Or king f1. There is no way another person blunders checkmate, right? I've already seen two people blunder checkmate today. He was scaring me there for a moment with how much time he was using on that move. Oh my God, that was that was a scary moment. I was like, there's no way, there's no way. But okay, Nepo is ranked four in the world. He's not like, you know, Fedo Seyev, who is like probably ranked 20 or something in the world. Yeah, there's a big difference between rank four and rank 20, guys. One of them blunders checkmate, the other doesn't. But it's okay, everybody blunders checkmate at times. It's totally fine. I know every single person here has at least blunders checkmate once in their life. Okay, so we got Rook at four um and then we'll take either e4 or h4 i think h4 is the more accurate one never mind well taking h4 was actually probably the more accurate one but it didn't matter because it's a time scramble i think white's actually going to win this end game now he's up too many pawns how did black lose all of his pawns he i you know what i don't ask questions to answer to i don't ask questions to for questions I don't want to know the answers to. Um, okay, time, 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 time. He donated he donated those pawns away for sure. Oh my god. Matthias went from winning to drawing to losing. That was a roller coaster of a game. Except it was a, just a downhill roller coaster for one side, I guess. Well, no, I mean it was he went up and then it was a very slow, gradual go down. Um, but okay, so Matthias is in a must-win situation here. As with the white pieces, he can definitely do this. He had such a good position against Nepo before, but this is gonna be one of those games that um you, you, you know it's going to be intense here. It's gonna be intense. Jan is playing the Grunfeld as black. This means he's going for it. He wants it, he wants to. He's showing his dominance. He's showing that he can win this position as he can win this game as black too. Yeah, Nepo being Nepo, definitely a lot of chaos on the board. Blue Bomb is definitely looking super sad right now. I can't imagine like the game just start instantly. He needs like a moment to recover and everything, but Nepo is just going for it. Like Nepo is like, I will be aggressive. I will show to you that I can win even with the black pieces. Um, but it definitely does look like he's thinking about the previous game way too hard. He's he smacked his forehead a little bit over there. That is that is not great. That is definitely not great. Um, we just want him to, you know, play his best game. Whenever you lose a previous game, just focus on the next one. Just focus on the next one. Forget the other one. Just go, just, just like, it doesn't matter what you did in the previous game. You just have to win this one. That's the only game that matters. Um, this is definitely book line, but we're going to see some more chaos from Nepo because he is that kind of player, right? Like, that's what we're going to be expecting. This is the final for the Speech Chess Championship once again. The winners, the winners get $1,000. Just don't, just don't tilt. Exactly. Just forget. Just forget. Hey, look, if you have goldfish memory like me, you won't, well, you can't even take, guys, the bishop's not hanging. If you take on e6, there's bishop takes c3. Um, so we don't we don't want that to happen. <clears throat> All right, I got Queen A5 going on here. We're gonna do some short cast lake. Queen takes C3, Queen takes C3, Bishop takes C3, Rook A B1. Those are some ideas that could happen, but you definitely want to get this is one of those times when I say it's actually good to get your king castle because I don't like having my king like right in the middle of the board. 
um, when there's an open file, like right next to me. But okay, f4 has been played. We got to move this bishop somewhere. The most logical square will definitely be d4. It might look like you're losing a pawn, but if you take here, you're going to get hit with the long castle. Yeah, the long castle looks pretty pog. Um, so the idea is that you long castle and you don't play rook d1 because there's queen a5, which doesn't actually, so you don't actually win the piece. So you got a long castle in order to get your king out of that. Let's see, he plays bishop d2 instead and not bishop d4. He probably missed that long castling idea. That's totally okay. Um, but bishop d2, queen a5, white is going to be a little bit passive. Never mind. I would say white's going to be a little bit passive with castling, uh, with castling and defending his pawns and all that, but instead he just pushes c4, gets his bishop to c3, wants to swap off that the, the bishop on g7. He's still not castled, and it's almost move 17. Let's see. Well, he has to play knight d4 at this point. There's no other way to do it. <clears throat> um... Knight takes d4? Hello? Like, you, you you don't really have any other moves. If you castle, there's like knight takes e2 and you actually just lose a whole piece. Um, so I'm not actually sure. Okay, we do have knight takes d4. Okay, awesome. That was a 20 move thing for knight takes d4. All right, this is not great time usage. That's scary. That's scary. Like, Nepo is almost up a whole minute. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, we're probably going to see bishop takes d4 as well. But like I said, this is not looking good for Matthias because he actually needs to win this game in order to have a chance at going into the bullet game. Um, so if he draws, obviously this will be Nepo's win and Nepo will be grabbing the $1,000. Of course, that's not to say that Matthias has been playing super, hey, he's been playing super, super well, honestly, um, so far this entire tournament. If we've watched his games, we followed his games from the um the swiss part of it as well so he's been playing super well but of course nepo is one of the most like well known i want to say like blitz slash he's like good at swindling you you know like he's really good at doing this kind of stuff so there is definitely a lot of pressure right now on matthias this is the final once again uh there is going to be no, there are not going to be any more games after this one if Matthias doesn't win. And he needs that win real bad. But once again, it's going into an end game. I'm not liking Matthias' chances for a win here. It's very realistically going to be a draw. But we all know that if it's a draw, Matthias is going to have to push for, for a dub. So, eat. Mm -mm. Okay. That's ambitious. That's very ambitious. Not sure what the bishop's doing on d7. It's doing something, but I'm not entirely sure what. Uh, uh, Black is definitely not going to stay passive here. He's going to like bring out his pieces really, really soon. He needs to move this final rook, but White also has like 19 seconds. I don't think he has a plan, which scares me. Honestly, like just move that bishop back and go for h4, h5. But he's letting his time run down. Oh, I don't like f3 though. That like leaves your king side a little bit unsafe yeah like i was saying rook d8 just activate that final rook it's gonna be really important rook takes c5 because that's a free pawn and your king's gonna be in check after the whole exchange line all right this is unfortunately looking like nepo's game this is gonna be nepo's game also the time is um all right all right time 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 not just time the position is not looking good Ooh. Okay. Um, this is very unfortunately looking like Nepo is gonna be wrapping up this title Tuesday. Very well played game on Nepo's end. Oh my god, the point two seconds. This is just nerve-wracking. Like, there's not much white can play for. You're still currently like basically okay, and he's actually won by timeout. Well, 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 well. That was a very, very well-played game by Nepo. Honestly, huge congratulations to both players for playing amazing. Obviously, um, Matthias was battling some inner demons in this game as well. But his previous game against Nepo was so looking so good. He was looking so good. It looked like he had all the chances to win, but unfortunately, he let that slip through. But that's chess, right? Like you let one chance slip through, and you might not get the you might not get a rematch. However, that was 
that was that was really really good game by both players and huge congratulations to both i do believe we will be you know having an interview as well but once again guys the season total prize fund was five fifty thousand dollars this week nepo is taking back one thousand uh second place so blue bomb Matthias is actually taking home 500 so that was really really cool um and yeah the semifinalists are taking back 200 quarterfinals taking back 100 each so everybody gets money everybody gets money and we will be in giving nepo an interview really soon so uh we will be back momentarily stay around we'll be interviewing nepo
and we're back here with the winner of today's title tuesday um how are you feeling after everything today nepo uh well i feel a little bit better than previous week then uh, there i managed to do to the finals and then i lost Ooh. so it was a small improvement comparing f f with the previous uh, tt so well it's it's fine <laughs> well, I mean, I'm glad that you know you you won this time. It's it's you got some really good revenge against Fedoseyev today. Yeah. You're also telling me how in your in your previous game, um, you actually mouse slip before instead of playing. B3. Yeah, I mean, okay. Recently, I started to play this B3 move one in Blitz, and I think it's pretty curious line. It's uh, I think it really deserves attention. It's like very natural. Why play without big theory for some development? But when you play B4 instead of B3 by a mouse leap, okay, this changes your your setup. Hello, hello. <laughs> so I was uh, struggling, but I managed not to lose and even was lucky to win in the end. But For I think sure. Matthias was slightly, maybe a little bit too slow overall. Yeah, I think uh, Matthias definitely started thinking a little bit too much when his position didn't go quite the, same, the way he wanted it to. But you guys both played an amazing game and super, super happy for you mm. guys. So yeah, we just wanted to ask a little bit, um, how are you feeling for candidates next month? I heard that was happening really soon. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, especially now, let's say after I finally won a TT tournament after <laughs> years and years of uh, attempts, now I, f I feel like it's the peak of my career, but and uh, I don't care anymore about anything else, yeah? <laughs> well, I mean, um, first of all, I, I, I really, if, I mean, if, if jokes aside, I really, I really want uh, candidates to, to be held mm -hmm. uh, but uh, still I mean okay I think they announced it, like it should start some, some somewhat about first of November but I mean uh, the COVID situation is ge is getting worse uh, other the world I think as Russia and also some another option I think it's it was said it's Georgia I believe uh, right. in Belize I mean it's it's not going better anywhere but uh, let's see what happens I think pretty soon FIDE should uh, make uh, an announcement Oh, well, I definitely hope it does happen, you know, as long as it's safe. Uh, and mm -hmm. I wish the best, you know, for your chess and everything. And when do you Thank plan you. on starting to stream more? Because I think everybody wants to know that. We all want well, to see more uh, streams from you. Yeah, uh, obviously I post streaming because of, you know, I have to spend more time preparing and I don't want to, let's say, let any energy, say, uh, go, go away for streaming because, like, streaming mm -hmm. is good for fun, but... I think it's it, it it really interrupts preparation. So you know, right. last few months I, I stream not that much. Well, I mean, I I do hope that you know you're going to be getting ready for the candidates, and it was a great pleasure to have you play and win your first title Tuesday today. Yeah. So yeah, okay. now probably probably now I I can I can never play it again. Yeah. So I made I made I made finally something decent, and uh, okay, now I can like. So yeah. next Tuesday, I can uh, I can go to play maybe some football instead. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, yeah. whatever you plan to do, we'll be here to support you. And best of luck for our candidates. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. All right, guys. And we are going to be wrapping this up really, really soon. So um, today's knockout bracket was was very, very intense, actually. There were a lot of really, really strong players. Um, but... Nepo, as you guys heard, he won his first title Tuesday. The first title Tuesday. Whoa, 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 whoa. That that is actually going to be pretty. That, that I'm I'm just glad that you know I was here for his first win because Nepo's a great guy. He's he's a very good streamer as well. Obviously, very very great, amazing chess player. So, being here, having the chance to you know commentate on how his wins, that was amazing. So he played a really intense final match against Matthias. Huge shout out to every single player who participated in today's Title Tuesday. That was a great show by everybody. I will be signing off really, really soon. Um, the Junior Speed Chess Championship is going to continue. And that is going to be also followed. So this weekend, this weekend, October 3rd and 4th, there is going to be a one, wait, sorry, I can't do math. $15,000 Price, price fund, uh, super chess swiss. So that's gonna be even more than Title Tuesday, guys. That's gonna be pretty crazy. That's, it's, it's just like a week of really, really intense chess, honestly. 
So make sure you guys are staying around for all of these events, the Junior Speed Chess Championship, the, um, the Super Swiss with the 15K dollar prize pool. Guys, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be so much fun. I hope everybody enjoys all the tournaments that are being held on chess.com. And if you got the chance, if you're a title player, make sure you're participating as well. Maybe I'll even participate myself. Hmm. Um, but yeah. So if you guys want to see more of my content as well, you can follow me on twitch.tv, aka Nemsco. Title is in the description. But the Junior Speed Chess Championship is going to continue. Thank you guys all so much for coming here today. It was so much fun casting this with you guys. So hope to see you guys in the near future. All right. Thank you guys so much. I will see you all. Bye.